let's take a look at this Texas Tech offensive front where Dawson Deaton will lead the way at center. Josh Berger is one to watch at the right tackle position. So Roderick Thompson is banged up, has had some rib injuries. He will be able to go. No T.J. Vasher tonight. Azukamo may be the go-to receiver. And Keyshawn Carter has returned after missing a week's action. We'll see plenty of Taj Brooks tonight because Xavier White is not available. Banged up after last week, and it looks like we've got a marker to start playing. Our official tonight, referee Scott Campbell, the white hat. Our replay official is Jeff Hansen. Ball start, number 77, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. You saw a false start in the game that preceded us in the first overtime that really cost Oklahoma State. Ethan Card, the guilty party here. There you see Columbia, a multi-talented player that was recruited by Wells to Utah State. In fact, you might recall him as a backup to Jordan Love. This is just his second start in his career. Over the middle, it's caught. That's Azukama, right on cue, the go-to receiver for the Red Raiders tonight. Yeah, Trey Brown trying to cover him here again. When you get man-on-man -man coverage, unless you can affect the quarterback, this is going to be the net result. You talk about that one being put on a rope, Tim. And it's taken by Azukama again. <laughs> See, that's the matchup they like. Trey Brown is out there. They're going to try to come after him a lot. Pace and tempo. If they get 10-plus explosive plays on the initial drives, they're going to continue to keep their foot on the pred. It was a gain of nine, so actually second down and one here. And they go the same route, going right after him, as you mentioned, as Kama, and that matchup against Trey Brown. And Oklahoma's got to have a response to that because, again, if they continue to move down the field, at some point, you got to be concerned about the mindset of Trey Brown. They've come after him on consecutive plays, Tim. You know, you look at the line on these two teams coming in. Both went to overtime against the Longhorns. Oklahoma won in the Red River shootout. Texas Tech had a 15-point lead in regulation with just over three minutes to play five weeks ago when we were here, and the Horns pulled it out. So we expect a close one in tonight's game. Why not? It's the Big 12. There he goes, looking for the line to make. And Columbia gets it done, and that's the key. It's his feet that can get the job done in ways that Alan Bowman could not. Well, the thing that I got out of the conversation with their coach is that this quarterback makes great decisions after he goes through his progressions. As you look at the Oklahoma defense, we do have some news there. Here's some more news. Sir Roderick, Sir Tan, inside the 10, first and goal. Pushed out by Ronnie Perkins. By the way, one of the guys with making news is emergence after missing six games before last year's college football playoff. It's the patience inside to wait on this play to develop and wait on his blockers. That's just outstanding instinct for a significant game. First and goal from the five. Outstanding penetration that time for Oklahoma by John Michael Terry, number 40, the rush linebacker. Coming in, piercing through to make the shoestring tackle. Now this Oklahoma front is very active, and they demonstrate against TCU, but so far, it's not that front that's been attacked. It's been that back end they've been getting after. It. You know, Oklahoma's been the fast starting team most of this year. This is rare to see an opponent come down the field this quickly. Let's see what they do with this trip receiver up top and they get a natural rub. They're going to come back to more of a balanced look here. Probably still going to work up top unless they feel like they've got an isolation down around the 10-yard line. Probably going to go up top. Three wide with Thompson in the backfield. It's Sir Roderick for the corner. No signal. He's about a half yard shy. Woody Washington wearing the numeral zero. Bumped him out and Thompson gets up gingerly. I was surprised they ran this into the boundary again. The short side of the field where Oklahoma runs laterally extremely well. They're not the same Oklahoma front as they have been in the past, but they can run laterally. Well, they're going to take a look at this. Early on the field, the runner was short at the goal line. Previous play is under further review. Best news about this delay is perhaps it gives Thompson a little time to get his equilibrium back. Well, you can see you've got a bunch of white bodies over there, but all one needs to do is get to that cone. I don't know if he had control of it Boy, at that point in time. I don't know. I think he got to the pylon. Watch the feet. Right there. I think he's on the pylon with the left foot. This is awfully close. Uh, I don't think that particular angle gives us what we need there, but... 
It's the best angle we got, perhaps, and uh, Thompson did a fantastic job on the short side of the field trying to get in. But I think, Tim, the big takeaway is, as you alluded to, the nondescript start with the penalty on play one. Remember, Texas Tech is the least penalized right. team in the conference. All right, here we go. Here's the look again. Watch his foot, right? There, I mean... That's every bit as close as Penix was last week in the Big Ten. We know how that ruling went in the overtime win for Indiana against Penn State. Of course, that was with a reach with an arm and a football. This is with the foot. Yeah, I don't know if the right foot got in. Well, I thought it was the next foot. The left foot? Yeah. Very, very close, no doubt about it. And where they have it marked, at the very least, it should be closer than the one-yard line. Mike Pereira is back in our studio. I'm happy to report that uh, he's with us again tonight. Mike, what say you? Tim, they got a couple things to look at here. And I think the key is the left foot, is the left foot down in bounds. And then, of course, he stretches the ball out, hits the pylon. Does he still have control of the ball when he does hit the pylon? Which, if the left foot's in and then the ball touches the pylon mm -hmm. before it comes loose, then it would be a touchdown. So, to me... That's what you're looking at right there is that yeah. left foot. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I believe he touched it. I do. Right there. But I, here, I don't know if he has control of it, well, though, Tim. I don't know if the right all he foot. Had to, all he had to do was break the play. I understand. Though. I understand, but After I'm looking at the right. With the right. did not step out of bounds. Therefore, it's a touchdown. Touchdown. Yep. Please set the game clock. 12 minutes, 20 seconds. 12.20 on the game clock. So, so, Mike, do I get one for one in next week's video? <laughs> hey, I hope you're, so. You're number one in my book, period, now. Now I'm working on Spencer. I'm working on Spencer now. I'll let you know. <laughs> so clearly he had control and his foot was in bounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, the reminder is that, you know, once you break the plane, yep. it's, it's all over with. Trey Wolf will try for the extra point. By the way, it's been no picnic field goal kicking. They've not made one field goal this year. They're 0 for 3. 21 of 22. And points after. Right down Broadway. And the Red Raiders take... Trey, Trey Wolf will kick it away. Trey Brown will let it go through for a touchdown. Take a look at the Sooners lineup. Reed Humphrey is their best offensive lineman, the center out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. From a skill position standpoint, they do not have Charleston Rambo tonight. That's significant. Yep. Marvin Mims, the freshman of quite some influence, along with Austin Stockner, the H-back slash tight end, along with Spencer Rattler, who loves to go in the direction of number 18 at that so-called H-back or tight end position. He'll have T.J. Pledger in his backfield to open. We will see plenty of Seth McGowan as well. And, uh, Lincoln's got some issues with guys lining up, and that's he's not happy about that. Not the way you want to start. There's an official's timeout, we're told. Oklahoma requested to have the ball placed at the hash mark closest to the press box. <laughs> well, you know, he scripts those plays. He had a few things in mind. Well, he, he may me not want anybody to know he scripted them, but I tell you, he did have something in mind, that's for yes, sure. Yes, he did. T.J. Pleasure, as I mentioned, is the lone setback on first down for that play. Marcus down, Pleasure down. After a game of five, up to the 30. And oftentimes there's the big heavies in there grabbing trying to drive block and they get a hand in there sometimes it's tough on them but man i'll tell you nondescript way to start off this drive if you want to match texas tech looks like holding, holding number 52 offense 10 yard penalty still first down that's tyrese robinson 52 Along that front line, Tim, Tyrese Robinson, as you mentioned, Creed Humphrey is the stud in the middle. He's the guy that they rely on, do a lot of creative things with him. But there's a couple of battles going on at tackle. Some young players pushing those starters there. Eric Swenson is being pushed by Anton Harrison and company. Young players on that side. And look for them to kind of make their way in there as this game moves on. Moves forward. 
Boy, not a lot going on there. Well, they, well, they may have gotten the number incorrectly there. This pass is incomplete, thrown in the area of Mims. That happens from time to time. They may get the wrong number, but Tyrese Robinson didn't do a lot except joust. As you look at this uh, Texas Tech defense that has some movement. Eli Howard is a big-time playmaker up front. The linebacking story is an issue. Christian Mer Merriweather unable to go tonight, so Jeffers moves over to his spot. Morgan's turned to where Jeffers is. Josiah Eldridge will move into the spur position at linebacking. And that's secondary with Pat McPherson with a couple of scoops and scores in successive weeks for the Red Raiders. That's McGowan. Seth McGowan stays on his feet. That's forges ahead. One the original line of scrimmage up to the 23, maybe 24-yard line. Well, he got as much yard as he possibly could, but I think the bigger narrative is that you see all the black jerseys populating the football there. I mean, that looks like a hornet's nest, man. They were all over the runner. Uh, Tim, I think that the emerging narrative here is Oklahoma scored 49 points in the first quarter. They've been so dominant in the first quarter, and so far in this drive, Texas Tech has flipped the script and has become the dominant team. Yeah, and, and Lincoln wasn't happy with the original hash mark he received. Third and 12 for Rattler. There's the quick turn-in pattern, caught by McGowan, but shy of the necessary yardage. So that holding penalty will force Oklahoma into a punt formation. Kaze Eldridge there in his hip pocket playing that spur position just ran up and grabbed him from behind. Outstanding defensive effort. Understanding that you may get that assignment where you've got that more athletic guy that you've got to send back there. But that's the reason why they got you playing that spur position. It's a hybrid spot. Got to be able to be fast, discern plays quickly, and then finish it off. Reeves Munchau will boot it away. Averaging just under 39 per punt. His longest was 48. Low snap, and Adrian Fry is back deep. We'll let this one bounce in front of him. Texas, Texas Tech bounce. And rolls dead at the 31-yard line. The Red Raiders were hot when they had it moments ago. We'll see what they come up with when we return on this ghoulish night in Lubbock, Texas. Draw them off sides. They scrimmage from the 32. There's the crossing pattern again to Asakama. It's another first down to the 44-yard line. And they are really working over Trey Brown. Well, they're going to have to find a solution because if it ain't broke, you're not going to fix it. Off coverage, he's backpedaling and got those hits. He turned those hips first of all and then got vertical. That's problematic. Stepping up is Columbia. Well, he may be stopped a little shy of the original line of scrimmage. Isaiah Thomas is running him down. This young man has made some impact. Redshirt junior from Tulsa Memorial High School has been starting at place of Perkins and has been a major factor. There you see that pre-snap stimming moving around by Alex Rich's defense. That was a quick curl, incomplete for Trey Cleveland, 85. He's at that Z position. Normally held by T.J. Vasher, who's unable to go in tonight's game. Trey Bowling would defend it. Offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. That'll go against Josh Berger. The right side tackle. There you see Alex, who, by the way, knows a lot about David Yost. It was David Yost, the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. They told Mike Leach about Grinch. They had worked together at Missouri, and he was hired by Leach. They had that wonderful year, you might recall. There's Yost, the offensive coordinator, with the lovely blonde locks. And uh, Grinch would later be hired after the success at Washington State by Urban Meyer as a co-defensive coordinator at Ohio State before coming to Oklahoma. His career has been on the fast track ever since. But trying to get the Oklahoma defense up to the standard that they want has been a difficult task. Yeah, you know, that stimming up front for Oklahoma has been an issue for Texas Tech with penalties on their opening two drives so far. You just got to hold your water, be mindful that they will stim. That's the narrative. I mean, Alex Grinch is one of the best at what he does. Love talking to him about where his defense is. They're growing their work in progress. Well, their defense is is mightily Number 77, good. offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. After the play was over, that is car sportsmanlike conduct. Head coach, Texas Tech, coming out on the field, wow. talking oh, to the call. Half the distance to the goal, uh -oh. so second down. That's oh, very young Matt Wells. Like. Oh, yeah. Very typical for him. Yeah. Or the referees are a little sensitive. 
<laughs> uh, something else to remember, if he gets another one, he's, he's gone, out of, he's out of there. just like a player. And that really barking. Probably pulled that mask down, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna say, man. How else would you have done? Yeah, there was a little intentionality in Oklahoma's defense for this series, it appears. Yeah, Perry and Winfrey, the nose tackle, Timmy, number eight, is really, really active. And again, it's one thing that Alex Grinch is known for. We talk about that speed D, which is the moniker. That's what they carry themselves, and that's how they see themselves. He says we're about a year away, but he's not going to let his players off the hook. He's expecting all of them to read and react just like they just did. Third and an eternity. We do say it's actually 45. My friend Scott Alexander, content coordinator and st statistician back in New Orleans, telling me, yeah, you can really count it all the way up to 45 yards needed for a first down. Markers all over the place. Miles Price was the intended receiver. It was well over his head. I don't think they picked up the flags. We just heard some whistles. But they picked it up because the ball was uncatchable. And there's they'll some, put it away. There's some game developing inside the game here. And let the last play, John Michael Terry, number 40. He plays that rush in, and they had him dropping to the flat. That tells you a little bit of something about where the Oklahoma wants to deploy their speed. Something to look at down the road. Austin McNamara will boot it away. He actually had an 87-yarder once in his career. That's a fair catch by Marvin Mims. Big route that really exploded Mims offensively against TCU week. Rattler goes underneath on the tip down to Pleasure. And you saw McPherson right there. Boy, this kid's been outstanding. The senior transfer from Penn State by way of Columbia, Maryland. He's been a big-time game play breaker. Defensively. Had a scoop and score, but watch him put his shoulder here underneath the would-be runner. Pledger never had a chance to get his feet underneath him. As soon as that ball was planted on his numbers, McPherson was right there to take him out. Excellent open field tackle. Third down at eight. Two by two setup. You can come after up a little bit if you want to, but this pressure's long. Eight yards a long way. Uh-oh, ball's on the ground, but he's got it. This is where he can really be dangerous, and he's got loads of time. It's caught. Right on cue, that tight end that really has the speed of a wide receiver knew right where to go. Well, so many things could possibly go, go wrong on this one. Rattler loses the handle on this one. The shake route, which is a long route that takes time to develop, it's a route that comes back to the field, away from where Rattler is going. He's trying to direct him and get him going that direction. Stogner does a fantastic job of aborting his route and then turning and going the opposite direction. And, of course, when you talk about deafness with the touch of the ball, Rattler does a great job real time of placing that ball where it needs to be. He had a little friendly fire from Adrian Ely that bumped in doing the right tackle. Stevenson is in the game, but this is the one. How about that open field tackle yet again? Who you think that is? Yeah, kid is everywhere. And you know they're moving him to the field, wherever their best asset is, and that's what you're looking for because it shows you some of the creativity that Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, I know who your best talent is. I do my homework, so I'm going to put my best defender on that same side. Within the last three plays, two outstanding open field tackles by McPherson. By the way, Ramondre Stevenson, who is one of those players eligible tonight after such a long layoff, led the nation in yards per carry, 8.1 yards for any player with a minimum of 50 carries last year. Now, he stays in the game. They move him to a receiver timeout. spot. Texas and Tech. the timeout taken. First the half. Time. Red Raiders will take it with 6.02 remaining here in the first quarter. He can scoop and score. He can also make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Hello. How do you do? Fox College Football is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. For the playbook on home loans, Rocket can. Ah, uh, Billy Sims, a number that you were destined to one time wear. You look at the defensive additions by way of transfer, both junior college and five-year senior grad transfers. Morgan Stern from Duke, McPherson, Penn State, Schooler, a three-time All-Pac-12 performer in Arizona. It's made a difference for this Texas Tech team. Rattler rolling out in the corner, incomplete. Great scoops 
He's got great hands, yet you recognize the name you should. Bob's son, unable to reel that one in. But he, he had a big game against Texas. Yep, he's a workhorse. He almost made Papa proud there. He tried to get that toe down, almost got it down, just get a little bit on the white, but he does a tremendous job at that eighth position for this offense. And in talking to Lincoln Riley, he feels so confident and sure that you can count on him anytime you put him in there. He's an outstanding, consistent player. You know, Bob's last game was Bedlam. We were there for it at home in Norman. They won the big 12 title with Baker Mayfield. The night before, he was watching his sons play in the state playoffs. North High School for Norman. Underneath on the check down, Morgan Mims. Flag comes down late at the sideline. As Mims went down, the flag came down. McPherson doing the honors again. Well, you better know stopping Mims after the performance he had against TCU last week was going to be a premium. You can see he's making his way across the formation on the shallow foul. crossing route. Face mask, number eight. Defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. And you know, McPherson is saying that's my bad. He, he knows it. He's made a couple of great plays in open field. He's trying to make another great play on a really good lead. Lesser known player. If you've been on the state of Texas, up in Frisco, around that area, you know who this guy is. He's an elite young player at his coming out party last week against TCU. Well, if there's going to be a mistake made by McPherson, it will be one of aggression. First and goal for Oklahoma. Stevenson the setback. Stevenson carries. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Timmy Stevenson, of course, one of the three players that was suspended from last year's bowl game. Missed the first half of this season. Just a little iso play inside. He reads it and finds him vacated space to take advantage of and again they really miss him a lot those eight yards per carry last year led the nation he's going to help them out a great deal in the chief objective and that's to establish their run game Bergich is one of the best kickers in the country puts it through and we are tied at seven Ramondre all the way looks a little like Dupree with that body of his taking it in <laughs> Young. And because he's only scratching the surface, maybe the playbook isn't completely open for him. And that's why Oklahoma has struggled in late game situations and allowed teams to come back on them. You say that's a fair assessment. Alex Hogan bringing it up after dropping it early. Taj Brooks is in the game. Remember, he's Adrian White unable to go tonight. And so Robert Thompson playing hurt. That pass is tipped and intercepted. Into the air. Talking to Alex Grinch, he said, look, we're moving some guys around. They've got another guy, DJ Graham, number nine, who they moved back over to that corner spot, a converted wide receiver. But watch this tip pass right here. They looking, they're looking for athletes, Timmy. Right up front, you got a bunch of hands up in the air trying to affect the quarterback. Nice job right there. Getting in the vision sight. Got a couple of suitors underneath that, just not concentrating and bring that one in. And Trey Norwood was right there to bring all it in. I mean, it may have been slightly thrown behind Keyshawn Carter, but that's a catch you've got to make in traffic when you're running a quick slant against Oklahoma. Carter had a masterful performance when we were here for that Texas game. Longhorns could not stop him all day long. And you credit Austin Moore to Brian, number 24. He was right in his line of sight and kind of discouraged him from making a clean pass. First and goal from just inside the 10 at the 9. Play fair, right there. It is a flat down. It's Mims in the end zone. DeMarcus Fields, 23, right there with him. You know, Marcus usually plays that spur position. Yeah, he's upset. He yeah, he's, he's disappointed in himself. Got to pick your darb up, man. Come right back after him. Because you better believe they're going to dial it right back up and come attack you. They're looking at body language. Pass interference. Mims does a great Number job of sitting it down. Yeah. Defense. That foul occurred in the end zone by rule. We'll put the ball at the two-yard line. Automatic. First down. Good call and a good idea by Rattler to challenge him. And everybody is, can improve their game. Even Mims can take a look at what the coverage is in front of him and slide away from that defender to split the difference so that Rattler has a little bit larger margin for error. First and goal for the Sooners. T.J. Fletcher, the junior from California, the lone setback. Mims down at the bottom of the screen. It's Fletcher. 
So the Sooners take advantage of the interception. Deshaun Carter hit slightly thrown behind him, but they take advantage after the pick. Oklahoma plays allegiance to their center, Creed Humphrey. <laughs> he gets them mushed out of there, man. I'm telling you what, they do a great job of moving in that green zone. Inside the five, they're really tough. Extra point. You know, they, they kind of revert or default to form, that's for sure. Yep. That's history. This series has been indicative of that, Timmy. But Oklahoma credit them for getting back on schedule after that awful first drive. Miles Price will take an E. Taj Brooks is in the backfield. First down and inside. To the 41. Ronnie Perkins, the tackle. Taj Brooks, the youngster, man, the freshman. How, look how many broken tackles here, or missed tackles, if you want to say this. Talk about yards after contact. You get past one sooner, they're another sooner. They're going fast now, but that was a big time play. Columbia just had to unload that when he was outside the tackle box as Okama was the intended receiver. Here's that previous play. Yeah, Timmy, it, look, just look at how he rips through that front. They're gaming and dealing up front, but when you get displaced, that means moved out of the area you're responsible for, this is what happens. Guys try to populate the ball. They're falling all over the place, can't make the play. Now it's Grinch is chasing him. Looks again. Marion Sooners all the way up to the 49. That's our Blue Boo, David Blue Boo, number two, with the tackle. Timmy, this is a full-size Snickers candy drop on the other night, baby. This is big time. You know how you go back to the house the second time to get that candy bar when they're giving you the good stuff? That's what Texas Tech is doing with this guy. Third down and two. It's a little run-pass conflict here for the Sooners. Yeah, it really is, and that's what they're trying to... Texas Tech is trying to get in the right play, and you better believe Alex Grinch is trying to stop because they can throw it our pass. Run our, our pass. Shy of the first down. Texas Tech may have to consider going and given the play they decided to run, that's uh, Asamoah 24 that made the tackle. I suspect they always planned on going on fourth down. Well, that's no question about it. Or at least taking a look at it. Let's see if they go trips and if the Oklahoma don't move that safety over that hash. They've got to win an individual battle on that side. Otherwise, it's, you're going to have great field position otherwise. And come back to balance now. And that's going to be... Not enough. He's going to be shot. Asamo again. 24. The redshirt sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. With the stick. And I think that he made it past the... Just past midfield, and he needed the line to make was solidly the 49 yard line. Yeah, you know, Texas Tech tried to influence the numbers by short motion away from that yeah. side that they wanted to go, and it didn't move the numbers. And so Oklahoma had more white bodies over there than they did on the other side, and, and that was Ronnie Perkins, the defensive end, number seven, that got in there, showed his athleticism there. Asamoah as well. All of those guys coming in there for You know, Spencer, to me, that tells me a little bit more about the difference in Texas Tech's offensive philosophy with Columbia quarterback rather than Bowman. Well, I they think that's a good they, point. They would have thrown on third and two, don't you think? I think what it's, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think what it shows is that we feel we can score. Yeah. Uh, again, you look at the efficiency. You look at what Columbia has done since he's been starting. He's taking care of the football. Well, you see, that young man, if, it, if not for injury, has a wonderful statistical resume. Stevenson again to set back. And he'll tote it again. This young man has been waiting so long. He's got fresh legs and they're taking advantage of it. That's Leggett 16. 
the free safety making the tackle. There are a lot of fans out there, and it's a next level guy, but he reminds me of Gary Brown. He, you know, he's got a, he's bigger and more lean than Gary, but he's got that low center of gravity, runs tight. Yeah. He's a thick guy, runs with intentionality. I was, I was going to say a combination of Dupree and DeMarco Murray. Yeah, you know, he's obviously Marcus is about 6'2, yeah. 242. He's closer to weight wise, but a little bit shorter. Play fake and right there with Kyle. He's got him right Wide open. open is Mims. Got him. Inside the 10, inside the 5. First and goal sooners. This young man right here has affected defenses in a very, very interesting way. You better ISO him and then find where he's going. That, that long crossing route takes a while to develop, and this really compromises coverages. When they're passing off, in that particular case, I think it was more of a straight zone type look. You need to put somebody in his hip pocket, and if you're going to pass it off, you better pass it off to somebody who's as fast as he is because he comes open more often than not. Yeah, McPherson also got the headgear and the face mask, so they'll likely get even more yardage to get closer to the goal line than they were to have been. Conversation taking place with uh, side judge and our referee, Scott Campbell. The result of the play is a completed pass for a first out. After the play was over, sportsmanlike conduct, number 96, defense. That penalty was assessed at the end of the run, first down. So they got Belidi, Philip Belidi, 96, the freshman from Portales, New Mexico. They did not pick up the uh, sort of incidental face mask that McPherson had. And that happens to him. You know, he's in for Brad, for Tony Brad for the defensive tackle who's out, and then Belidi moves up to that position. And then sometimes guys need a while to get acclimated. But, you know, you can't wait too long against this Oklahoma offense because when they're on, they are on. Is there any doubt who's going to get the rock right here? Again. I mean, that's like a freight train coming right at you. What a difference a player can make, man. And it just opens up the playbook, and, and it's just going to help everybody. Inside, everybody's kind of zone blocking there or man blocking. And even though you got one guy fall off of his block, I think that was Adrian Ely up, up front, the tackle. They still get in there, and it's because 29's got power, man. He's got... He ran right into Eli Howard, 53, who was an outstanding defensive lineman. And he went back about three yards into the end zone. Stay to take that extra year of eligibility. And what a kick. Go right through again and yet another touchback. <laughs> transfer in the backfield and Columbia just has to eat that one so a loss on opening down Benito in there, Nick rushed in, got in there and jumped on top of him. This is the kind of mistake you can ill afford to have. That snap was down low and away and you know, he is one of the best they've got. Dawson And as I said, psychologically, Spencer, it's a lot to put on a kid like Columbia when you're down suddenly two scores and you're trying to get it all back at once. Well, that's not all Columbia's fault, Timmy. I can tell you these receivers are letting the ball climb on them, and they're instead of plucking it out of the air, this is the problem. This ball is yep. right on the numbers. Yep. You've got to be able to see that and put your hands up in front of it and not let it hit your uniform or your face mask. That was Fungi, number 19, the freshman out of Lee High School. Midland, Texas, it climbed on him, just as you mentioned. I mean, a great presence of mind for Trey and company to be there, but Columbia's all right, man. The reason why he's in the game is because of his decision-making. There's nothing he's done on both these interceptions. I mean, it's been the receivers. Just a lot to take on, and now the Sooners going for the jugular, and uh, Pledger takes it to the 20-yard line. They're getting great yardage on the ground on first down which really opens up the playbook for Rattler. That's the narrative. That's what they're trying to do. And a little change-up now. The one with power. A little thunder and lightning, if you will. Ledger had a couple of burst and breakout runs to show he's got some top-end speed against the TCU last weekend. Boy, with that compliment, it really puts some stress on your personnel, groupies, if your defense is trying to defend it. See, so you got Bowman there having the conversation with Columbia, a good teammate. 
McGowan's in the backfield now. Play fake. And it's McGowan coming out of the backfield on the tech guard. Well, Thomas Leggett showing great closing speed there, the strong safety. A tremendous job of dissecting where that play was going and stuffing it out. You can see him read and react here. You got pressure. Nice job of dipping underneath to put temporary pressure on, but Leggett snuffs it out before you have a chance to even get going. The Red Raiders really, from a defensive standpoint, with two short fields back-to-back -back given them by their offense in a must-stop mode here. Just holding Oklahoma to three would be a huge win for them. Ledger in the backfield. Stoops comes split wide to the top. High in motion. And look on the out pattern. Right to him. What a move. Inside the 10. He's got a first and goal. Put him in motion. Let him make a play. Cam White, number 10, making the stop for and, Texas Tech. And, and at first, he made Leggett miss. I mean, it's an unbelievable job. Little Stoops doing a nice job. Number 12 said, oh, I'll just let you go right on past me, big boy. And you got some? Take that with you, too. Excellent job of getting what he could on that play. And we Five come of running. to the end of the first quarter. Started beautifully for the home team, but ever since, it's been all Sooners. like that and like McGowan did and gets a couple of extra yards this close inside man that's impressive doesn't help Texas Tech that Rashawn Merriweather can't go he's a difference maker at Mike linebacker they've had to shovel their linebackers around and it's putting added pressure on what is a much improved Oklahoma offense with guys like Allen in that backfield along with obviously others and It's down near the one-yard line. I don't think he got in, Spencer. And if he didn't, it'll be going yeah. the other way if he didn't get in. A combination of Stevenson and company. This is big. This is a 14-point swing. McPherson, guess who, comes away with the ball. And we'll see if that is the ruling from the officials here. Still no official ruling. Sooners believe it's touchdown. We'll clearly have a review, one would one would think. Early on the field, here comes the call. That the ball carrier fumbled before the ball broke the goal line plane. First down, Texas Tech. Yeah, that is big. That's a, I said, a 14 point swing. Jeremiah Hall. Yeah. Oh boy, I thought he got through. That should be touchdown. Yeah, his, his arm is clearly crossed. Yeah, the that should be touchdown. Yeah, that'll be a touchdown. Yeah. Morgan Stern upended him. You see, he's bracing with the left hand. The previous angle you just saw was yeah. definitively his arm is over the line. Ball is out after he hits with that elbow. Yeah, this should be a touchdown. Yep. Because, again, as we said on the earlier touchdown by Sir Roderick of Texas Tech, Sir Roderick Thompson, all you got to do is break the plane. And once the nose of the ball pierces that imaginary line of that plane yeah it's a score our replay official is Jeff Hansen you will hear the crowd moan I suspect when they get the news Mike Pereira is back in our studios did you see what we saw Mike? and they are gonna get the news that they don't like absolutely forget yeah. about even the ball coming out when the forearm hit the ground he had broken the plane with control of the ball so once again, Mr. Brando and Spencer, you are all over it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You know, he puts out a, a tape every week for all of us to look at, Spence. And you weren't going to let me set you up for that. You, oh, you sang really he, well. I was going to you know, sing he, your praises. He, I was really happy to see that he included that on his, uh, his tape that he put out. I had officials from all across the country texting me saying, don't quit your day job. 
<laughs> I love that little run you had on at the end of it. It was pretty impressive, though. You know? Again, I don't understand the long. You know, they say two minutes. Sometimes it goes Well, usually when it's longer, longer than, than that, that is they're trying to figure out where to place the ball, but I don't think that's going to be the no. decision here. That's After review, the ball broke the goal line plane. Flyer to the runner, losing possession. Touchdown. Well, a potential 14-point swing, which was what the fans here wanted, is now a distant memory. And the lead is up to three touchdowns, pending the extra point from Gabe Burkich. Still think there's some coaching points there for Hall, and you're extending the ball out. You know, no, nothing is preventing a defender from punching that thing out as well. you got to be mindful of it. Oklahoma got a break there. Well, that's the fourth touchdown reception this season in only six games, as Hall takes that one in. Before this, Jeremiah started 12 games for the Sooners with no touchdowns. Rattler's 16th passing touchdown of the year. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, here in Lubbock, Texas, the Oklahoma offense, 28 plus points in 58 straight games. That's the longest streak for that number. In fifth, that's all. Think about that. All right. that that's amazing. Yeah, Rattler was impressive. He's sneaky impressive. He went 8 for 10 for 100 yards in the first quarter and didn't even feel like it. No, you're right. Makes it look effortless the way he spins the ball, no question. And once again, an outstanding kick by Berkic. The ground, they, where they are right now in their transition, their evolution, they're a ground game first team. And on the quick curl, it's Azucaba again, who was uh, the number one target in that opening drive when... Columbia was 4 of 4. He caught three of those passes, leading Texas Tech to that first score, but they've been shut out since. This is a huge drive, not just for this game, but also for the psychology of this young quarterback in just his second start. Azucama, that time, had Trey Brown just absolutely sitting on it and almost came away with a pick six. Timmy, I think you're absolutely right about how to manage this quarterback. He had a 75.6 completion percentage coming into this contest. 5-1 to one touchdown interception ratio. He was doing everything right. So you got to be, if you're David Yost, careful about pulling the guy in those situations, but you can mess with his ego big time if it can affect his confidence. So there he is, Townsend, number five. He's in it running back. As we mentioned, they're banged up back there. No Xavier White. And Sir Roderick Thompson is playing with injured ribs. Pressure again. And there's another turnover. Almost another turnover. It was Keyshawn Carter that couldn't reel it in. The ball staying in the air and almost picked off by the Sooners. Ryan Meade, number 38. The redshirt senior. Owasso, Oklahoma. On any given play, it could be Perkins, Grimes, Winfrey, any of them. Stokes up front. That pressure was just all over him, man. Big time activity up front and not able to sort it out by Texas Tech. Alex Grinch has got these guys playing at a high level. And he's been able to rotate guys in. That's something they didn't have the depth last year. Get ready for Marvin Mims because he's a human highlight film on punt returns. They kicked it away from him as best they can, but it does take an Oklahoma bounce. And Texas Tech will down it at about the 38. So quality field position for the Sooners. Oklahoma. And both those guys transferring that to the next level. Named AFC and NFC players of the week last week. Impressive. Well, Andre Stevenson again the setback. Flushed. Let's it fly and it's caught. That's the Elise. He has been outstanding. What a big game in the Red River shootout against Texas. Sophomore from Allen, Texas. Well, this play took a while to develop, but Rico Jeffers, the Sam linebacker, this is a mismatch. You got a bigger guy chasing up the guy who's a lot smaller than he is. He's athletic, but not enough to keep up with that. The matchup, Oklahoma found on a slow developing route, moved the quarterback out of the pocket to help him. And he found him streaking across the field on the deep crossing route. Yeah, that's what he loves to run, those crossing patterns. First down, 10. Ball at the 33 of Texas Tech. Stevenson. He is just a load, isn't he? You know, he just ran towards the boundary and got as much yardage as he possibly could. I think his number at eight yards per carry, which he had a year ago, may remain intact. 
if not better than that after tonight. And it's impressive for a big guy, too. I mean, Oklahoma's going to have most of their success as you look at Murray there. This is one of the great all-time running backs here at Oklahoma. Outstanding career with the Dallas Cowboys. I think he played a full seven years or so. Yeah, had a cup of coffee with us here at Fox yeah. before becoming an assistant coach. 9,000 yards rushing. Second down and four. Rattler again. Look at that play for Stockton. Oh! touchdown. Oklahoma. Lee Spencer. There's no stepping into it for Rattler. His spin well, Timmy. and the way he flicks it out of his arm is absolutely his ball exquisite. Skills, his ball skills are sick, Tim. I mean, it really decries you. Most quarterbacks have to get set. I mean, you don't see Patrick Mahomes is the only guy I know that can do this from a standing position when it's not necessarily the ideal structure you want a quarterback throwing from. His accuracy is off the charts. That's not his issue. His issue is discerning what he needs to do in certain situations. And with the running game to match that, his maturation process is going to be impressive and much quicker than it would be otherwise. It's a touchdown. Previous play under further review. I don't know why they feel they have the problem he had with his offense. Again, let's take a closer look and see if the ball comes loose as he rolls through. I, I see no indisputable video evidence that it did. And again, once you After review, early on the field stands, touchdown. Yeah. And are up by four touchdowns. It has been a blitzkrieg since the opening series when Texas Tech took the lead. Oklahoma went backwards in their opening series, and they haven't looked back since. Well, Texas opened the door. Oklahoma's about to come through it. How about that flick? That is oh, maybe the best passing quarterback Riley's had. Like Full that. moon tonight in Lubbock, Texas. The effects of that being felt by the home team right now as you see a, another scoring drive that didn't take very long for Oklahoma. And this time they, they actually got it done after a punt as opposed to a turnover. Miles Price will take it on a fly and drop it. Picks it back up and look out. Gets it out to the 35-yard line. Wait a minute. That may have been a fumble, and Oklahoma may have it. Oklahoma may have it. Misery loves company. That's Jamal Morris that comes out of there with it. As he was coming to the ground, it appears that the ball came loose, and Morris picked it up. And he seems to be convicted, too. Yeah. Does Morris. In an affirmative way, pointing in the opposite direction. Yeah, let's, let's see him out. Morris is fighting for more yardage, and... Early on the field, oh, is it the return or fumble the ball out of bounds? First down, Texas Tech. Yeah, and you know what? He was also down before the ball came out. I don't know, Tim. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Let's see. The ball is out. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the player is on his back. Yeah, Morris was on his back, and he was out of bounds when he recovered it. Yeah, the ball was coming loose, no question. But when Morris comes away with it, he's flat on his back, and his back is out of bounds. So that, that was the ruling, and I don't see anything worthwhile to challenge that. So Texas Tech fans can't breathe a little sigh of relief that there's not yet another turnover. And they needed that, too, because the previous, when you throw out the scoring drive and the touchdown, the opening drive, it's been punt, interception, out on downs, and an interception. Previous play is under further review. It's going to be a long night if we yeah. have this many reviews. <laughs> See, again, you, you'll see where he lands with the football. The ball is loose. Morris will eventually come away with it, but look where he is. It appears to me as his backside hits, yeah. the ball is out. Yeah. Yeah, he, but, but number three recovers it with his backside on the white, which means it's out of bounds. Yeah, that's correct. That is correct. Well, I'm not rooting, but I, I just want to see this game be competitive. I mean, Texas Tech needs to get back 
on track. We know they've been able to demonstrate their abilities against a tough West Virginia ball club who was gained defensively. But Texas Tech went in there and controlled the last four minutes of that game and showed you something to this point have not shown. But as you look at the play again, Tim, you know, they'll sort it all out. But his left shoulder where he's <laughs> bringing the ball in and his back is out of bounds. Uh, again, I don't know why we're having to look at it. Trust me, I don't mind replay, but when when we can see with our own eyes. Uh, that sounds like that old Groucho Marx line. Who are you going to believe, <laughs> me or your own eyes? Or your lying <laughs> eyes, that's right. <laughs> but in truth, as you're, you're right, Texas Tech is a better team than this. Yeah, they the are. The turnovers have certainly helped Oklahoma, but the psychology of this game is so very negative for the home team. If this is somehow overturned and Oklahoma gets possession, Oh boy, I don't know that they'll ever recover from this. Mike Pereira is back in our studio. We're going to put you back to work again, Mike. I'm telling you, during this long I'm, delay. I've been with you so many times, I'm wondering what you'll sing to me <laughs> next week. But I, I think that I actually, I actually think the elbow is down when he controls the ball. He's got to have full control of the ball with a body part down in the ends. I mean, in the field of play. And I just right. don't think that there is enough to reverse that because I think control was just about at the same time as that elbow hit. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and by the, the way, I, where you're looking here. I, yeah. Right. And and Morris, when he does get control of it after the fumble, is out of bounds. His left shoulder, shoulder pad and back are out of bounds. Now he didn't realize that because uh, of where he was. Here comes After the review, ball from Scott the returner fumbled the ball and went forward out of bounds. We're going to bring the ball back to the 35-yard line. First down, Texas Tech. Okay, thank you, Mike. You got it. So I guess maybe the conversation was about where to mark the ball. That's right. As opposed to whether the ball was, in fact, turned over to Oklahoma. Usually if they confer for more than a minute, they're usually trying to figure out where to place the ball. Yeah. Now. First down, 10 from the 35. Texas Tech is uh, in a pitch right now to have a successful series without turning the football over. Up the middle, Tars Brooks. It's there. I mean, the Oklahoma weaknesses defensively are there. You just have to maintain control of the football. That's uh, John Michael Terry with the tackle after a gain of nine. The screen out to Brooks, first down and then second. What a great move. Brian Osamoa, number 24, the wheel linebacker was in position to make a play. But again, the nice spin move inside of Brooks. He did a fantastic job of eluding the tackle. Pace and tempo. And remember, Oklahoma has struggled late in games all season long. On the fly, going deep for Osamoa. First beyond his outstretched arm. Well, he had a couple of steps. Yeah, he had Jaden Davis. Yeah, Jaden was back there and, and had been beaten at that point. And again, just the speed to get past him. And he gets a vertical route here in a trail technique. And I'm telling you, he's lucky to get called for penalty on that one, just grabbing that waist area. A great move of getting off the ball to put him in your hip pocket. Second down and 10. Keyshawn Carter. Who, along with Azucaba, is a go-to guy, but tonight he's had a couple that he's not been able to reel in. In fact, they climbed on him, and turnover's the end result. He's up at the top of the screen, and now Columbia rolled over by the penetration of Osmoa. I think Columbia misread that play, and it was a, an option. A, it should have been a give option because he needed to run away from the numbers. He just hung, hung on to it a little bit too long. And Oklahoma's too athletic to, to get away for him to get away from it. Third down, 11. Very important play here for Columbia. Huge. 0 for 3 on third down so far tonight. But you can play off coverage because they've got at least 10. Nothing doing for Brooks. And that's a curious call to me. It really is. You know, this is what Texas Tech does. They throw the football and, you know, you're not playing field position. What is it? That, you take a shot, you know. Punt it away and then play field position. That, that makes you appear, it, it's almost as if you're saying our guys are stunned, we need to take a breath. I mean, that's what it tells me. Marvin Mims is back deep at the 10-yard line. 
McNamara to boot it away. End over end, this boot. And let's see, they're going to mark this one out of bounds. They clearly don't want Mims to get it. This was a shake. They're going to mark it all the way up at the 18-yard line. Here, Oklahoma up big with 9.52 remaining. I guess, Spencer, you know, the only good news for Texas Tech is that there's plenty of time remaining in this half and an entire half. Well, we know they're capable of scoring, that's for sure. They just got to – look, it goes back to those wide receivers early on, Tim. Those two interceptions were a direct result of players letting the ball climb on them. But for that, I still think they have a shot to be in this game. Stevenson, his wide open spaces. They were just gouging Texas Tech up front with a three-man line. And a big early back from Andre. That was Boyer Randall, number two, making the stop out of Battle Creek, Michigan, the junior. That little linebacker. These two running backs now inserted into the lineup changes who Oklahoma is in a significant way. Explosive plays of 41, 37, 29, and 27 yards, all made possible by their presence. Pain of six, and yet another second and short to open the series for OU. Radler stepping up, gets that three-man front, decides to take a seat after a yard picked up from the original line of scrimmage. And it'll be third down and three. Now, he'll learn again if he knows where the sticks are. He goes ahead and get that extra yard, and I think he gets that and protects himself in the same way. Just being mindful where that first down marker is. And he creates a run conflict scenario. It's third down, but you don't want to give downs away, even to a team that's you're up significantly points wise on. Stockner has been a favorite target in these situations. Tight end now comes into a slot position at the bottom of your screen. Mims next to him now. They're coming with the blitz. That's actually Weiss on the receiving end. And look at him go. Straight down the sideline and he's tripped up inside the 25-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle. DeMarcus, DeMarcus Fields was there playing the spur position typically, and they'll move him around a little bit, but Spencer saw him on the outside, got the matchup that he wanted. His eyes went there directly. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that ball. And this is an excellent job of pivoting and turning by Reese at the X receiver position that's opposite Z, and he gets up the field in a hurry on oh, another chunk play. Uh, he is oozing with confidence. Spencer Rattler, why not? Everything working for Oklahoma. First down, Stevenson. Wow, look at the vision he's doing. Absolutely. Wow. Inside the 10 yard line, another first and goal. And Boyer Randall with another saving tackle. Look at that. These are the missing suitors we were talking about. Bridges, by the way, will not go tonight, but Perkins is in the game and played very early. Stevenson has returned. It was a huge story this week, and Ramondre's mom was uh, tweeting about, you know, we're going to come to Lubbock and see our son. So the cat was out of the bag on Lincoln Riley after that. And I'd say she announced, and he's announced, that Ramondre Stevenson is back. This is a quarterback draw all the way. Rattler down to the wall. Timmy, I don't even know if they knew in advance that Ramondre was coming back. They couldn't do anything about what he's how he's running. These yards that he's piling up is coming after contact, and he's such a divergent talent. Watch the traction that he brings that allows Rattler to have one-on-one -on -one matchups in there. Rattler is elusive enough to make the first guy miss. You don't want him taking a lot of shots, but the end of the Baker Mayfield, his, his game is a little bit different. The plays are designed to allow him to escape and protect himself, but that was an intentional call and run. Stevenson in for another touchdown. <laughs> Tell you what, Spencer, we talk about this often, but college football is a game of evolution. And during the COVID era, particularly, we've seen so many of these teams and their coaches finding out late on Fridays that this or that guy might not be able to go. We saw it this week with what happened at Clemson. We, we've seen it at other places. Uh, throughout the course of the year. Oklahoma now with these guys back and Rattler seeing maybe the playbook open up just a little more with many more options because of their 
weaponry returning. I say Oklahoma is a much better team than they were coming into this game. There's absolutely no doubt about that. We got it started. Ramondre finished it off. Oh, uh, well, you know, I always get a little caffeine at uh, Wendy's whenever I stop by. Well, these running backs have been so productive, Timmy. Look at that. 42 points tonight. That's the season high for a first half. They always wait for us to be historic, Spence. <laughs> they do. Well, these guys right there were the main reason Oklahoma scored on the, each of their five last drives, and it's been impressive. You know, I thought... Uh, I've known Spencer Tillman a long time, and yes, I am older than he is, but when I had grandkids for the first time, he always did something nice for me. So this week, with the help of my daughter Tiffany and your daughter Elisa, we got you here. You Trey, me, baby Trey's first Halloween. Oh, that? man. Look at that little cute rascal. <laughs> Patrick, he came out of the wound twitchy, it's a, it's twitch, a, fast twitch fibers, man. His dad was a point guard at Oklahoma and basketball team, and and uh, his his mom, Elisa. <laughs> you know, you're done a fantastic job. I, I am. Tell, Can you see me turning red right here? <laughs> <laughs> That's a scoop. <laughs> Wide open, beautiful pass and catch. It's the tight end, Travis. Texas Tech was giving birth to a big time tight end here. Travis Koontz. They'll bring John Holcomb in there from time to time. But it's number 15 for a big guy. He's got this little choppy step. That head is leaning back, too. You're not going to catch him, man. Big time play right there. He stumbles in for the score. A nice response by Texas Tech and their big tight end. Way back on the other end of the field. Big Inside transfer. the 10 is Deshaun White, number 23. He's down on the field, and they're nursing that left leg of his. They usually got him in that Mike linebacker position. That's an important role for them. How about the presence of Henry Columbia on this particular play? This shows you what he's got coming, and that's the injured Sooner who got to him a little bit late and in so doing. And Coons with just enough huffing and puffing <laughs> to take it in for the touchdown. Finally giving this crowd of about 16,000 partisans something to cheer about. That was a bit of honey and a baby Ruth bar on that one. That was a nice candy sweet run. That was your favorite on Halloween night, wasn't that it? That was, along with the Zach Nuts. Yeah. Charlie Rancher. <laughs> I'm a candy corn guy. Are you? Yeah, I love candy corn. You're it's so ruined. Sweet. It's ruined many a diet through my <laughs> 64 years. <laughs> Hope the young man's okay. He makes his way to the sidelines under most of his own power. I think he was trying to let up so he yeah. didn't get a roughing penalty, and in so doing, he hurt himself. In, in a breaking motion, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. It was a non-contact injury. Wolf for the extra point. So, if we ever have any more pictures of Spencer Tillman's family on the air, maybe some more exciting things will happen for the home team. <laughs> Yielding a lot of points to... Uh, an opening series for Oklahoma that was typical. We'll see what happens with plenty of time remaining. Trey Brown is back. Bruce Christmas will roll past him and into the end zone for a touch with his uh, cohorts here in Lubbock and has made a difference. It was his strip that led to the McPherson scoop and touchdown to lead to the victory over West Virginia here last week. There he is. Let's see if some of these Red Raiders can force a turnover. He got a streaking guy wide open. Wide open is Mims. In stride, he dropped, dropped it. it. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Talk about letting the ball climb on you. That one climbed on Mims right between the one and the seven. 
You know, he's got his hands stable. He, you're right, he closed his eyes at that last second. He let that ball hit the pad of the top of his seven, Tim, and that's exactly what happened. If you go back and take a look at that again, you can see his eyes. You literally can see his eyes blink as the ball makes contact with the top of his breastplate. And again, if you pluck it out of the air, you have a chance to kind of re catch it on the rebound, even if you shit fumble. Well, he knows it. Yep, he does. No one feels worse than him. Third and nine. That stoops in motion. I believe we got a timeout by time the out. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Side First line. Half, 30 seconds. 529 remaining in the opening half. Sooners lead large, but we got a large amount of time remaining, too. <laughs> 42 to 14, our score. Third down and nine coming up. We'll see how Mims responds after that drop, Tim. You look at the guys, young guys' body language to see how they deal with that, those difficult spots. That's really what coaches are looking for. If you're mature enough to respond in a way where they can trust you again. They go trips to the bottom of your screen. That's great stoops in motion. Spencer surveys and checks down. That was incomplete. Mims on the cross. He's looking for a flag. He won't get it. Mims did get bounced around. Rattler wanted it, too, but Rico Jeffers made a little contact. Lobbying for it till the bitter end. I would have liked to see him come off of this because this shallow crossing route, you had guys holding him, yeah. and, and Rattler's got to be able to see that as well. I know that you, you're targeting him on the shallow crossing route, but it was a four-by alignment as soon as a rushing to try to pump this thing away. But I think you had a better choice there in that last play. Are you okay with that no call? Uh, yeah, I am okay with Are it you? because yeah, because I don't think he should have thrown it to him anyway. Okay. You got a guy in his hip pocket. Munchen will do it away. They have the block on. Oh, spiral to Adrian Fry. And he just does cradle it. Well, he had it. And he picked it back up. Oklahoma trying to claim that they pulled it away. Give him a chance to catch that. Him up. Yeah, you got to give him a chance to clearly feel that ball. I mean, it looked like it's bang yeah. bang to me too. He's got it. Yeah, he's got it. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm questioning whether or not he should have been penalized for it. I Let's mean, see. Proximity by Trey Brown to Fry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It was close. We've seen the flag. We've seen the flag thrown many times when that happened. But even in slow motion, it was close. But so the ball is at the 27-yard line, first down for Texas Tech. And Spencer, you know, you get a score here, cut it to 21 before the break, and you maybe think you game on a little bit if you can get a turnover. He got it up on the transfer. Pierce is Oklahoma territory before being shut down by Woody Washington. Relegated to special teams in Alabama. This guy right here has speed. Quick as a hiccup, showing you how he's going to be able to help this team right here on the big end. They will use him early and often if they can. 10-2 in the 100, Shadarius Townsend. Pressure again. And he throws it in the direction of Townsend. As Perkins had a hold of him and was trying to spin him down. Almost had him in his grasp. A very dangerous release by Columbia. But it's in the And Perkins coming up the middle. They, they do a lot of gaming and dealing on the inside. And Perkins with that number seven on looks a lot later. He's about 247, so he's athletic, man. But he sure is tough to block in open space. Another fine play by Perkins. So second down and 10 coming up. Looks like he's ready to play some hoops. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, Lutheran North. This is impressive talent. They're looking for an alpha, a leader on that team. On the field, he's a previous play is under further review. Oh, so there's some concern that that might have been a lateral as opposed to a forward pass. So we'll have to see. By the way, Spencer, while we have a moment, I want to send out uh, our concern, our prayers for one of the all-time greats at uh, Oklahoma. There you see, that's a forward pass. Yeah, I don't know why you would even consider that being a lateral, but you know, look at it. Uh, Billy? Billy? Billy Tubbs, yeah. who uh, we, we learned was in hospice care a couple of days ago. Billy is 88 and one of the all-time greats. Took his team to the 88 championship game, losing to Danny in the Miracles. 
that Oklahoma team with Seagar and so many other greats, Mookie Blaylock, Wayman Tisdale, Wayman Tisdale, all those great teams, yeah. Hugh Kennedy. They they had, as you recall, one of the great programs, number one for much of that time. The battles that Billy had with Norm Stewart at Missouri and Larry Brown at Kansas, and then of course his career continued. And one of the most charismatic men you would ever meet in the game. And uh, our thoughts, our prayers are with Billy, Billy's family, and everyone in Oklahoma because he was uh, an icon in every respect. Well, he's still with us for now. And, yep. and here's the deal. You you mentioned how much of an impact he was in personality. Could you imagine being there, going to a football game, and then going to watch Wayman Tisdale and the personalities? <laughs> yeah. After review, very the forward for pass. Billy Tubbs. Second down. Please reset the game clock. Four minutes, 49 seconds. 449. It would have taken about it would have taken about nine hours to play a football game if Billy had been a coach <laughs> Because he would stop the end. one of the great clips of all time was some debris was being thrown on the court in Norman Yep, and the officials came over so you got to get the crowd to stop throwing it So he goes over to the PA system and picks up the microphone and says okay Despite how poor the officiating <laughs> is would you please stop throwing things on the floor? <laughs> one of the epic moments I ever experienced as a broadcast prince of left-hand compliments. Oh, yeah he was right there with Ned Below. Yeah, that's a loose ball. Loose ball. Got that Oklahoma's one. on top of that one, it would appear. Although the ball still remains loose. Maybe Texas Tech corralled it. Let's go. Oklahoma football. They're going to say it's Isaiah Thomas, 95, that comes away with it. So just being able to seed the football, Spencer, a challenge for Columbia here. Well, they had a game on working with Perrion Winfrey, the nose tackle, and it puts him right in the position to make the play that he does. And again, it's all because of how active Alex Grinch has these guys up front and the presence of mind to take the game and the deal and then be mindful that the loose ball is there because a lot of times when these guys are moving, they're, they're trying to do it with lane integrity in mind. In other words, they don't want to get displaced because you can get gashed in a hurry. But that's a tremendous presence and awareness that the ball is loose. Ronnie Perkins in that mesh as well. Isaiah Thomas gets the recovery. Here's Rattler again with plenty of time. Oh, and miscommunication. And the foul comes down as Stockner was being held while he was running his route, that seam route, by Eric Monroe, number 11. You know, listen, I'm just telling you from an analyst standpoint, I thought the, the opportunity was on the outside. Yeah. He, he was trying to, he's got great coverage here. Pass Benito's interference, kind of, number 23, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, wow. automatic. Down. Eric Moore, I don't Eric, know. Eric I don't know. Moore had him there in coverage and had him really in a position where you, know, you can't make that play. But I think on the outside, he had a chance to take a shot. I, I don't know the, how that could be on fields, but once again, I think I may have gotten the numeral incorrect. Moore had a, sort of a little bit of an arm bar there, and that's when the flat came out. Not a with fields 23. First and 10. Pledger. Bouncing outside. Nice cut. Did you see him put his foot in yeah. the ground and turn vertical again? That's just fantastic running. Morgan Stern, the stop. When Thomas Leggett was trying to stop like Legend. Leggett has got nice leverage, but he turns up field and runs right through that arm tackle. Uh, uh, the suddenness of this running back core. They can run for power. They can come back and hit you, with Pledger did there, with the suddenness and then the little shoulder and being able to put that foot in the ground and run past you. They've got a nice complement of assets in this backfield. So he's going to six again, second and four for Redler. And then he's shallow crossing right underneath. You see, that's what I'm talking about, the vision. He's got a long way to go to develop. And he uses his feet to get inside the 15 yard line for a first down. And a late fly. Some frustration now for Texas Tech. McPherson stayed with that way too long, and there's some wolfing going on between he and Rattler. No need for that. See. Rattler, here's the isolation here on Theo Weiss at the extra position. So he's coming underneath here. On this shallow cross, man, he's just waiting there. And Rattler's got to be able to see that. But I mean, you had a safety over the top, but again, the bottom line is you had a chance. McPherson was far enough There's away no from foul. him. He was not going to make it. For unnecessary roughness, the result of the play, first down. Wow, they called it off. That's surprising. Yeah, and see, they're giving them the opportunity. They're not like saying, hey, you've got a half-field read or one read and then pull it down. He's surveying the entire field, All right. and he doesn't see him sitting there open. You know what, Spitz? I think Rattler got in an elbow before McPherson did, so they, they decided to wave it off. At first, we saw a flag thrown right where McPherson was. They 
talked about it and decided to pick the flag up. I think it's a good no call. Well, Lincoln Riley told me that's he's got a little bit of Baker Mayfield in him, that little yeah. attitude and that edge. Yeah. You want that. Wide receiver screen to Thielen. Wow. He's down to the six-yard line. Line to make is the five. Cam White, number 10 with the top. And the Jimmy, it's about that sudden move. Here it is coming again to set a guy up that's trying to square up on you. Watch this sudden move here last minute. Eyes inside. You're coming up trying to make a play. Then Hogan, the cornerback there, just gets juked. Yeah. I mean, that's just sweet football, right? Just yeah, a nice is, job. That is a whiff. <laughs> A real whiff. Second and two. A long two. Out of the shotgun with TJ Pledger in the backfield. It's Pledger. And he is stuck. Nowhere to go this time. Eric Monroe coming up from strong safety to initiate contact. Rico Jeffers also in there to collaborate. He got a lot of help up front again. Devin Drew, big number 90, was in that mix to funnel him outside to make him bounce it or attempt to anyway. You had a lot of bodies around that ball. There's a, there's a big sequence here for Texas Tech. If they could hold Oklahoma to a field goal. Yeah, to your point earlier, these are the two teams along with Oklahoma State are responsible for this league having the reputation that it does. If they can hold here, Tim, yeah. and get a score, we're back, they're back in business. Rattler, it is dropped. Oh, right Reese had it. Incomplete. It was thrown a little behind him, but I think Rattler had back shoulder in mind. No question. It Just was couldn't a bring it in. Call play, and again, I think Rattler did a fantastic job of, of handling the blitz off the edge. Yeah. Okay. Handled that part of it well. You got it completed. Yeah. A little jousting going on, so you can credit the Texas Tech defense to some extent. Berkich will try the field goal. Well, the Sooners have had three clear drops, so they could be already hitting 60. And Berkich boots it through. This young man has just been money all season long. Forty-five to fourteen. And Theo East knows that. Uh, could have easily made that catch from Rattler. His uh, countenance, Spencer, with Rattler, I think that was one of the concerns about where this young man is in his development. Mm -hmm. Tonight, I see the most confident Spencer Rattler I've seen all season. He came in with so much advanced Billy, and of course he had the year to sit and, and uh, after the three games of experience, took the red shirt, and again, I think he's, he's, he's a mature guy. There's no question about it. And Lincoln Riley told me just yesterday that he's handled everything that's come his way to this point and that's what he's most proud of including being set against texas i mean he's just a true oklahoma state got an 11 point lead then gave up a kickoff return for a touchdown that really tilted that game for the longhorns and once again sam ellinger gets it done in overtime as he did in this building five weeks ago taj brooks takes that one ahead and is ushered out of bounds at the 30. that was an important win for tom herman that's for sure more on that. All the highlights from those games coming up with Rob and the guys in our State Farm Halftime Report. Did you like that four-minute chart yeah. that, that Urban put on today? It was impressive. It was good. good stuff. How much fun was that? On a quick look in, as a kind of unable to bring it in. You know, everybody prides himself on being able to respond in situations, but you have a chart for a reason. There are scenarios that pop up in real time that even the smartest people out there, highest IQs, refer to it in those situations, and uh, it's important. I think the number that I'll always remember now, and all broadcasters should remember, with 131 on the clock, you gotta, you gotta run a play. Gotta run a play. 122, you don't. <laughs> Penn State found that out last week. And of course, they're struggling again tonight. At home and happy. Out of the shotgun for Oklahoma just abusing the offensive line of Texas Tech. That's Isaiah Thomas again crashing through. Yeah. Nick Benito inserts well with the rush in. You can see them collapse off the edge again. Ronnie Perkins does a nice job of budding and releasing to get in on the party as well. But 95 and 11. Just Johnny on the spot, man. They are so impressive and so active. And here's the thing 
that Alex Grinch has now. He's got a rotation of guys where he can allow them to get to the fourth quarter. And hopefully, at least the way he sees it, they'll be a lot more less winded than they have been in the past. Well, you know, their defensive front is their strength, and you're seeing that exhibited again tonight. I think, really, Spencer, it's, it's about the back end for Oklahoma. Their defensive backs have been abused in a lot of games in recent years. I don't need to tell you the stories of how it's gone in the playoff, but he gets those linebackers and defensive backs in jive with the defensive front, then Oklahoma may be the formidable program that they once were. Well, you're absolutely right, and you can tell a Texas Tech really attacked Trey Brown early in the contest, and they were so confident they stayed after three consecutive plays. McNamara will boot it away. That was 12 yards on that sack. Four sacks for White on the season. He got another one there. McNamara had almost like an 80-plus yarder last week. Yeah. He certainly used one now. And a shank earlier, only 28 yards. This one is also shanked, but he does get a healthy a roll. roll. And Oklahoma will have it at their 33-yard line. With still a minute 17 remaining until halftime. But it's been the oopsies and the dropsies that have stopped Oklahoma. Really, the only thing stopping them is themselves. Got to clean it up. Here's Mims. Wide open, he's striding and just lets it climb on his breast place. And then Weiss follows up with an opportunity on the back shoulder. He lets it climb on him as well. These drops, whether it's an Oklahoma or Texas Tech, have one thing in common. These young receivers allow the ball to climb up on them. And both these quarterbacks have got rifles for arm. And if you're not used to it, it'll happen. Jeffers is coming after him, and he just unloads it. Rico Jeffers was going on a unblocked blitz, and Rattler just got rid of it. Smart decision by Rattler. Getting rid of that ball. Nothing good could happen. You're backed up and make smart decisions. That's what Lincoln Riley wants of his quarterback. No, Lincoln is that 12th man, and that's not a comment or commentary, but he's, he's playing most of this game himself, particularly in the first series. You can tell it because the pace and tempo is so price, precise and crisp. It tends to change as the game goes along. Second and ten. Stevenson. All the stretch play is out of bounds at about the 38. I want to ask you a question, Spencer, because you know what the narrative has been. It was Oklahoma State or bust for the playoffs. They lose today in a game that, frankly, statistically, they, they had the better of it much of the way. Do you think this league absolutely had to have an unbeaten team to get in the college football playoff? Otherwise, no shot? I would say not so much so, because I think the defenses are playing as a whole better, Timmy. I'm not saying they've reached the level of the SEC where you know, it was reasonable to say you've got a two-loss team that could make it. Now, I don't think they're there yet, but I think Oklahoma State acquitted themselves enough for me from a defensive standpoint to think they can still get back in it. That's Stockner on the receiving end. And We've already seen this. This is an Oklahoma team you, you simply can't sleep on. And after what happened today, hard to believe that you have the, the Longhorns of all people to thank, but you do. Absolutely. Now suddenly you're in the mix, and literally any of these teams, Iowa State, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, who has to go to Manhattan, Kansas next week, are all in the mix for a potential Big 12 title game shot. And, of course, the two best teams will play in the championship on December the 19th. Ramondre Stevenson is the setback. Under a minute to play in the corner in the first half. And Stevenson forges ahead to about the 48. Eric Monroe is the tackle. And another timeout by the Sooner. What's some really creative things that Lincoln Riley does with his guards. You know, in one play last week, he pulled his center out. You know, Creed Humphrey was out in the edge of the perimeter protecting his quarterback and created flow from the linebackers to take the tension away from him. I mean, there wasn't a guy five yards in him. Just watching that interior line play is yeah. so impressive. By the way, uh, just got word that you and I will be in Manhattan. Kansas. Is that right? Yes. Mm. We'll have that Oklahoma State-Kansas State game, and both of them licking their wounds. Oklahoma State, in many re respects, that kickoff return was the difference. It tilted the game, and uh, Mike Gundy's got a quality club that has maybe the best third-down defense that the Big 12 has seen in forever. They came in, I think it was 2 of 19 on the year in terms of 
allowing third down conversions, but Kansas State turned it over far too often. Playing without Skyler Thompson, Will Howard had a tough day. But again, these teams are very much in the thick of the Big 12 race. Jimmy, I, I don't say this as a pejorative statement at all. I think there's so much balance and improved defensive play beginning at Oklahoma State that this is a more balanced league now. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, the SEC is now finding out about spread offense. Yes, sir. He threw him on Gray Stevenson. Oh, he hurdled in his way. Inside the 40 to the 37. Move the chains, leg it, the stop. I remember watching Billy Sims years ago <laughs> dive over what guy when I was with the Oilers, and Thomas Leggett here almost got that same kind of foot in his face on that play. On the crossing pattern, and a favorite move, really, by Jeremiah Hall. Here's the hurdle, and by the way, Spencer, this has been proven to be not always the best thing for your health. It may not be, but boy, if you can pull it off, it sure looks pretty. Yes, it does. <laughs> And a quick spike by Rattler. By the way, Billy Sims, the reason Spencer Tillman changed his number at Oklahoma, in case you were wondering about Spencer Tillman's history as a OU running back. Now those are great national championship years. Yeah, Billy had a great influence. I think he should have won two highs. I think Charles White won it the year when he yeah. should have won it. 79, but 78 he won it. That was because Marcus Allen was his lead That's fullback. Right. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> Embarrassment of riches as we look at another yeah. good former running back to Marco Murray. Third down and two. A quick curl. It's caught by Weiss. And it's a first down to the 18-yard line. Eric Monroe comes in there to finish him off. But again, another moving the chains play by the Sooners trying to use pace and tempo as a tactical advantage to get another score. Yeah, I think they may clock it here. They do. Yep. And give Burkett a chance to perhaps add three to the tote board here where hanging 50 can almost happen in a half. Texas Tech not in a good mood. How about that? Speaking of numbers, Spencer was number 34. I step in. I believe it was Frank Broyles that said, and his feet, Keith, they're like pistons. They're like pistons, Tillman. He can run, and he can run hard with, with a muddy field. That's what makes him so special. Number 34, Tillman. Here's the kick from Burkich, and it's good. That was Broyles, not Keith. By the way. Would you look at those thighs, Keith? And he's only a sophomore. <laughs> Lincoln popped up maybe. to get the three before the intermission. Coming up in Los Angeles, let's take you to Rob Stone and all those guys that have won Heisman's for the State Farm halftime show. How do you do? Eat along with pleasure. Gives him a, a nice compliment. A little salt, a little sugar. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. All the uh, all the uh, accoutrements that you would want. No question. <laughs> Touchback in Oklahoma. We'll have it. Spencer Rantler makes his way back out. And as we mentioned at the top, 18 of 26, 259, a couple of touchdowns, and his uh, the swagger factor. And that was something uh, Lincoln Riley talked to us a great deal. He said the part of, of, of him that really reminds him of Baker Mayfield is the way he carries himself, the confidence. But now, Spencer... With, with all of the weaponry that has returned, and especially with number 29 in that backfield with him, I think he's got even more confidence. He's oozing with it. That pass incomplete. Stockner, the intended receiver. And Monroe back there defending, but to your point, Tim, again, you have to go back of what and underscore what the run game does to his ability to pass the football. Against TCU, they started to populate the line of scrimmage. And again, as you look at this play again, the ball was up in the air. The hand was on the shoulder in the back. That was contact. There's no question about it. Eric Monroe, the safety, oh. got in his hip pocket. Yeah, you can did. see the left hand and the right hand on his back. Yeah, it was a late flag. They, we, we clearly never saw one on the field, but there was one around the sidelines, and they did mark it off. It was a interference that was the call, but it came late, and we never saw a flag on the field. And Andre Stevenson carries it. And uh, that's Hutchings, number 95, the sophomore 
and hit on the stuff. Just to finish off the thought, when you talk about the run game, Oklahoma success now, they are a run team first. That's going to help the growth and development of Spencer Rattler because teams have to come up with an answer to respond to him. He's a heavy load. He's a tough guy to stop. And so when they start populating the line of scrimmage like TCU did, you're going to find some open lanes over the middle of the middle for matchups with Mims and company. Second down at six. Rattler checks down, and then another one that gets away from Mims. He's had a tough night tonight. Again, I don't know if this ball climbs on him or not, but again, he's still trying to shoulder yeah. catch it. You yeah. know, these guys have got to understand you can pluck that ball out of the air and help yourself out. They're going to get back to the Jugs machine and work on that when they get back to Norman, Oklahoma, to see if he can sure up his game and make sure his confidence doesn't get away from him. Because, Tim, those 15 first downs are where he's going to get most of his opportunities from in the second half. They had 15 in the first half. I mean, look, they got 48 points and had three clear drops. They could have hung 60 in the first half the way Rattler was throwing the football. There's a nice curl to Weiss. And he's out to the 48-yard line. Nice job of Weiss coming back on that ball. He's pointing and indicating to his quarterback, great job of feeding me, despite the fact that he was covered up and initially came back to the ball that allowed him to get some separation. Yeah. And, of course, Rattler paid it off with an excellent pass. Well, you see the, those numbers for Rattler this season in 12 first quarters and then the turnover story, including that overtime. Lincoln said maybe the best football they played, most consistent, was early against Texas and then the overtime, the way they were able to play. And there's Stevenson again. One stiff arm, a second stiff arm, and he's finally taken out of bounds by McPherson again. I'll tell you, Jamarcus Ingram, number 22, thought he had him dead to rights. And Stevenson just gave him that little shift arm. And like you mentioned, Timmy, and that speaks to the streak you have here. Here it is. McPherson, one of their best players, finishes it off. But right before that is when Jamarcus Ingram came in, and he was denied an opportunity to make him his There it is right there. Nice little stiff arm. So I'll take that with you. We'll see you. <laughs> Boy, he's good. Good camera work. First and 10 from the 34 of Texas Tech. This is what this is a red Spencer. I, I understand the Lindell White, but that, that looks just like a smaller version of Marcus Dupree to me. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying, you know, from a heavy inside runner, he does kind of remind you of Lindell a little bit. But yep. that looks like Marcus Dupree. Yep. And when he carries that ball over that nine, it makes it look like a two. Right. <laughs> and it makes it looks like double deuce yeah. coming on the outside. You're right. Well. He's got those hips. He's got those hips. Yeah. Derrick Henry may be a little bit taller than he is. Well, Derrick is a greater, it's a faster inline runner. Yeah, I mean, also, Henry's got 4 3 speed. Yeah, he's also more current. You know, we're a lot older than Leiter and Bush. And those guys. <laughs> they may not even remember Marcus Dupree. Rattler. Boy, what a throw. It's caught by Theo Howard. That's a, that's, that's a dark spin again. Almost effortless the way he throws it. And it was between Schooler and 17 and then Thomas Leggett, the safety. Watch him find that void in between them. That's what you do in zone coverage, guys. Here's it throwing a nice little whip across his body. You know, a lot of young players have got to have their feet set to make that throw, not Rattler. First down and goal from the four. Sooners with more of the same to open the second half. Good penetration there. Rico Jeffers comes in, and yes, another flag comes down. It was on the far side of the field, so I'm not sure if that's along the line of scrimmage. These pregnant pauses drama. are something special, aren't they? Big swole. Tell us what it is, big boy. Illegal formation. More than four in the backfield. Yep, that's what Offense. That penalty is declined. Second down. By the way, something Spencer that Mike Pereira put out this, this week on his tape is what's been happening with these tackles when they get behind the line of scrimmage. When they set up, it's almost been a gift they haven't made that call here. In other leagues, you see it all the time. 
particularly in the SEC, where the right and left tackle almost have a V shape to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you saw, yeah I saw that in, in Mike's tape. Yep. There's an example of it there. You see 59. There's a little dump off that goes to Ramondre. He gets it inside the five yard line. Well, to finish your thought, you're going to have seven on the line of scrimmage. If you've got four technically in that backfield, they're going to catch you on that every time. But you're right. A lot of times when guys are trying to deal with pass rush, Tim, those tackles will get almost behind the, the tail end of the center. And clearly they're defined by the definition off the ball. They're technically in the backfield. Yeah. Adrian Ely, 59. Just on occasion, you might see that right foot of his off the line of scrimmage. And maybe even the body to some extent behind where the actual line is. They'll call it sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Mikey Henderson. Hello. Touchdown. Number three gets into the scoring column. The freshman from Ranch View, Texas. They're bringing him in from all over the place, Timmy. Jet sweep. Yep. Power action to get him in there to make a play. Again, that's about eye discipline. When the schooner's able to score like that, guys get used to seeing the big heavies come in there, and then they come back with a little jet sweep. Yeah, an outstanding lead block from Jeremiah Hall as well, and here's Burkage for the extra point. Those are... How about those stiff arms uh, by Ramondre Spence? Jimmy, it's all about everybody's got it. We call him a 5-2 player. You got to have the stiff arm. Take that with you, and there's a little milk does. And how about a Tootsie Pop for that as well? That's for Putnam City North's finest. Yeah. One of the best, man. What might have happened had he just been able to stay healthy, right? My yeah. goodness, he went through so much. I'll tell you what, Oklahoma... Kevin Wilson, so many different players. Mike Leach have done well with those quarterbacks. Different styles, air raid concepts. Lincoln's coming here with RPOs and all kind of things. No matter what they've done, they've got a built a tremendous tradition here at Oklahoma quarterback. Well, what a weapon Burkich is, right? You're going to get a touchback every time. Story of the half for Matt Wells. Turnovers. Way too many. The tip drill paid off for Trey Norwood. He had a couple of them. Well, they were assisted tip drills. Again, it comes back to those receivers. We're saying it ad nauseum. They let the ball climb on them, and then when you don't pay attention to your center and the ball snapping, hitting you right in the hand and dropping it, you can't give a team that's so active like Oklahoma defensively an opportunity to take away. Yeah, those penalties will add up, but the turnovers and the points off will as well. As a comma, tried to cradle that one in, but it hit the turn in front of Trey Brown. Second and ten. Ball was tipped, it appeared. The trajectory of the ball may have been stopped him. It was at the front by number 11, Nick Bonito, who's been all over the place. Number 11, that rush linebacker. Red shirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Taj Brooks is in the backfield. You know, in a lot of ways, Matt Wells is coaching really for the rest of this season here in the second half. That's Jalen Polk on the receiving end. Oh, excuse me, 82 Keyshawn Carter, 82, not 12, on the receiving end of that pass. Now, Trey Norwood had him. He just missed him, you know, open field tackle. He had to travel a long way to make the play. Yep. But he had him, just came up short. Third down and two. Pressure again. Unloading it down the sidelines. Tipped in the air again. And intercepted one more time. Woody Washington. I think that's going to come back to him because Nick Benito, the rush in, was offsides on that play. There is a little yellow hanky back at the 32. Uh, movement up front, up top, and they're going to get number 11. I think. Offside. He just hit the helmet and popped into the air. Watch Defense. this. Yep. That five-yard penalty. Off the helmet Result. of Pat Fields. Pat did an excellent job technique-wise by looking back to identify the ball. We've seen a couple of times a day in crucial games. Here's the top of the frame. Here's You see number 11 kind of gets on that M and goes upfield. That's what got him. So a break for Texas Tech. They retain possession. Brooks. Not much. Boy, his stone right at the line of scrimmage. Backed up, actually, to the 36-yard line. 
well, this defensive front of Oklahoma can really, they, they'll give up some plays from time to time and a couple of chunk plays, but, but they can really make you look bad because they're so disruptive. Yeah, right now they just pivot the back and bring all that pressure underneath. Brooks had it, had it knocked away by an outstanding hit Sean from Deshaun 123. He came in and drove on that ball, and I'm always looking when they're playing man coverage, proximity to the ball. You can't populate as much. If you're in zone, you can get a lot of bodies around it, but you're looking for that one guy who can cover. And that particular play, Deshaun White did a fantastic job from the mic position. As we were touching on, when you're, when you're down as much as Texas Tech is at the break, this second half is really about the rest of the season. You know, they played well last week. Their defense was strong. Shut out West Virginia for the last quarter and a half. But they have been just devastated by this superior Oklahoma defensive front ever since they got behind by three touchdowns. And, you know, when they know they've got a pass, you can just come right after them. Yeah, Perkins and company on that last play. Again, Timmy, they're so active and Grinch. Alex Grinch knows he's got a good growing group. They're learning every week. He's got a little bit of depth that allows him to get to the fourth quarter and still have a little bit of wind left in him. And with this cushion here, they don't have to worry about playing complimentary football so much. Got down with a couple of turnovers against Texas. Defense had to generate three just to stay in it. This is a beautiful punt from McNamara after a couple of shakes. Marvin Mims has been outstanding in the return game. Had a big one last week against TCU. He stopped at the 27-yard line. Sooners have evolved. You know, although it hasn't been perfect, they have laid the framework for the second half of the season in the Big 12. Guys come into the game to play quarterback now. 18 of 24 for 209 yards and a touchdown and a pick. And some... Uh, Pop up duty and well, he's a an opportunity. Gift. You know, he had to come in during the, during the Texas game. Well, he's a gifted thrower as well, Tim. When Rattler was pulled by his head coach, he is very gifted. You're right. Nice little pass out here to McGowan, and Seth McGowan up to the 29 yard line before being pushed back by Leggett. This young man, a redshirt sophomore from Waco, Texas. Saw extensive that, uh, action in the second half of the opening blowout win against Missouri State. Played in six games as the primary backup to Jalen Hurts a year ago. And had a wonderful high school career. Threw for just under 5,000 yards, 51 touchdowns and 13 picks. Take a shot here, Tim. A little flooded. And here comes Brian Darby. Number 16, the freshman from College Station. Out of AM Consolidated High. And they'll move the chains with another first down. So we close the books on Spencer Rattler. And Spencer T, I think he's going to remember this. As you like to talk about inflection points, seminal moments mm -hmm. in a young man's career. I think tonight a lot came to fruition for him that he'll be able to recall as the season moves forward. I think the run game, again, I'm going to say it because that's really been the catalytic part of this offense. Stevenson's return allowed him to become the quarterback he needs to be to be successful. Yep, Theo Howard with the catch. And he was on the ground. He thought for a moment he was in the pros. Without contact, he wanted to get more yards. But he was down at the 44-yard line. I'm talking to Lincoln Riley, he told us, hey, I said, hey, Lincoln, what, what, what is it about this offense where it fades at the end of the game? He says, look, that's just kind of who we are. You know, it, it's what our personality is right now. We don't want to be that way. But when we get our run game back, that should change. And tonight, I think, it was a Michael Cosmo that it certainly changed in a hurry. McGowan. Changing direction. How about that? It looked like he was going to... He was going to cut outside following the block of his wide receiver, and instead he just cut it back in and jitterbugged his way to the 35, a yard shy of the first down. That's like going to the house that has the lights off. You're not supposed to be there. Or say, man, get away. I don't have any candy over there. And you hightail it out, and he was a pinball wizard on that play. I, I just kept knocking on the door until someone showed up. Second and one. Never say no, Brando. Mordecai. Mordecai showing you some wheels there. Got to the outside, and you know, again, when you can come in under these circumstances, you can play loose, you can play at a high level, 
and ride the momentum. And Lincoln, you can just tell by his body language, he's not leaning, letting up. No. He's running his offense. He's trying to get these guys to grow up in a hurry. And he's calling his offense. Well, given what's ahead for Oklahoma, in so many respects, this is exactly what the doctor ordered before they get Kansas a bye week and then Bedlam. You know, that that's going to be their next really big matchup on November the 21st. Get these guys as much action as you can. And irrespective of what happens to Oklahoma State today, they are a much improved team. And oh, their yeah. defense, I think, is going to perhaps pose some problems. Now, again, Oklahoma's run game kind of levels the playing field a little bit and gives them a little bit more added advantage going into that one. This is not the same Oklahoma team that, no, even, played, that even played last week. No, they're totally different. Totally different. And they've done this without Charleston Rambo. Remember mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Some drop passes that we tend to forget and blow out victory. There's McGowan. 14 and he's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. It'll be third and two. There's the schedule we were talking about. You know, it's a class of hard knocks for Les Miles in his first year, trying to get it done with a bunch of high school guys, no junior college players, and they're paying a price right now. Oklahoma State on the 21st. I'll tell you, I was impressed with West Virginia today, Spencer. Deggy looked really good. Mm -hmm. Bouncing gotta, back the way they did, yeah. again, after being dominated in that fourth quarter. Yeah. Lenny Brown played well. They got a good run game to go with it. Neil Brown's done an outstanding job. They're going to be heard from in Morgantown. 32. Nothing doing this time. And Morty got, got, got kind of caught in no man's land on that rush. But you got to credit the rush up front. Jalen Hutchins in the nose tackle. Got so much penetration on the other side of the line of scrimmage. 95, the big fella. If you want to disrupt the mesh point, that's one way to do it. Play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And he did. Just watch 15 and then watch this disrupted. He's not fooled by the fast motion or the jet sweep action at all. His eyes zeroed in on Mordecai. He goes in and blows it up. Yeah, the big 300-pound nose from 40 Texas makes the play. So now, after the loss, this will be 43 yards for Burke. He hooked one. Wow. That's that's rare. <laughs> Here's Chedarius Townsend, the Alabama transfer, had a couple of really good runs in the second quarter when he came into the game. He's just a fun guy to watch. He's a speed merchant, man. Again, I love to see these guys who were relegated to special teams, and that can happen to you in Alabama where they've got a sea of talent coming in there, and he's got a chance to find a, a way to contribute to this ball club. You know, you made, a, made an excellent point about uh, the way they're handling Henry Columbia. This is just his second start. Mm -hmm. He was recruited to Utah State by this start, by Matt Wells and, and David Gustin. You know, if you're right. Those, those turnovers were unfortunate and not his fault. And they're hanging with him as you see Townsend toning it again, about a yard shy of the first down, Asamoah with the tackle. But but I wonder sometimes here about Alan Bowman because he's a great passer of the football. He really should have won that Texas game but did not. Got hurt again the very next week. They played poorly in that game and, and dropped it. And frankly, in the aftermath of the loss to Iowa State, he loses his job to Columbia and you begin to wonder if he's going to get that opportunity again. I'm sure he's thinking the same thing. Here goes Townsend on the strip play. Stop behind the line yeah, of scrimmage by tough, Stripling. Man. That's the kid you were talking about that can bring so much when he comes into that end spot and takes over for Isaiah Thomas, 33. Well, he's able to, to laterally deter and, and send Townsend the opposite direction. Yeah. And when you see that, you know, you, you got to protect yourself and go the opposite way. But then they'll come back and get DeMarcus Stripling the, the speed in. We've not really seen him featured today but when he gets in that wide nine wide seven technique let me tell you something he'll make you change your mind yeah. coming off the edge if he adds a few extra moves to what he's got he jumped out on the table last week with a beautiful boot to men way back at his 10 yard line 11 14 remaining Protected with Allstate, you've never been in better hands. Well, security is what it's all about. Just knowing that you've got that kind of 
fortress around you to protect you. And of course, the strategy to move him outside the pocket buys him even more time, and it helps to have a big tight end that can pay it off on the back end as well. Outstanding job there by big quarterback and the big motivators up front. Boy, look at that. That's a lot of meat right there. Man. They're going to get a little turned off now. They, they've earned it. Yeah, Humphrey's earned it. Uh, Green Humphrey. By the way, we mean that the right way. <laughs> They're really good. Reed Humphrey and Tyrese Robinson and Hayes and company. They're unloading the bench here. And oh, by the way, yes, just one 14 remaining. Not another 14, as I said the break. Uh, got a little case of double vision. Seth, 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 Seth McGowan carries it, and he's stopped by Rico Jones. Now, back to the point on offense, Tim. I, I love what Lincoln Riley is doing by running this offense and, and keeping that up pace tempo as if for starters. Because you know, Mordecai is one of those guys on that long line of Austin Kendall and Trevor Knight, guys who were, for the most part, relegated to a backup role. But you got to help these guys pay off their careers. You know, get them in there some meaningful minutes, minutes and reps so that it makes a difference to them. And I think the coach owes it to them. And kudos to Lincoln Riley for being mindful of that. And Mordecai, a little time with that one for. Mikey Henderson, falls incomplete, third down and four coming up. Now he's coaching it, man. He's running his play. I mean, you can do that when you've got an academic All-American. Oh, we got a flag, too, really? A late flag. Boy, oh, boy, they've thrown a lot of those. Yep, this one have. I see, though, it's not on the sideline as the other one was when we started the second half. Here's the call from Scott Campbell. There's no foul for an eligible man downfield. The ball was touched at the line of scrimmage, third down. There you go. <laughs> we've, had a, we've had a lot of that tonight. <laughs> There's a flag. We're picking it up. McGowan in the backfield on third down and four. See that right tackle, Spencer? That's what we're talking he's, about. He's leaning back. Yeah, he's, he's off the line of scrimmage. That pass is incomplete. I mean, he's, he's a backup, but it's Bray Walker, number 70. And I'm going to give a point of emphasis from the one and only Mike Pereira on his tape this week. Because I don't know. He said, I don't know why they're not calling this. Because it's happening all the time. And he specifically said it's happening all the time in this league. Well, it, you know what? When coaches draw their attention to it, they usually do something about it because it's easy to, to sort out and spot. Yeah, well, I, I await the barrage of hate, hate tweets coming from Oklahoma fans. Munchow puts it away, and Adrian Fry will let this one drop, and it takes a bounce the wrong way for Oklahoma. Texas Tech will have it in good field position. Next weekend, Pac-12 football returns. Arizona State takes on USC. A little brunch with Big Noon in the Pacific time zone. Arizona State and USC are over on FS1. Big Ten heavyweight Michigan battles Indiana. Both of those games are next Saturday morning, noon Eastern on Fox and FS1. And as always, streaming live on the Fox Sports app. Enjoyed the Big Noon show today. It was really good. A lot of nice interchange between... Coach Meyer and company really took us to school today. They did. 9 a.m. Pacific time next week. Stepping up in the pocket here, Columbia decides to tuck it and run. Oh, he the first down. Yeah, he does. He's got it. He does. With room to spare. That's what I like about this kid. He is savvy and smart, Tim. And you don't get a chance. If you pull him from this game because of the interceptions, you yeah. never get a chance to see that. Wow, we saw. Gonna... They're going to say he's Spencer. short of the first down by about a yard, but we have come to the end of the quarter. All Oklahoma. We open play here in the fourth quarter. There's a low snap. Taj Brooks is going to... That one's gone to Ezukama. There was a play fake, and Ezukama was the intended receiver on the third and one. That was a little bit too high for him to handle that. And so second down, they decided to go for a little something, something. I don't mind that. That's a Why pretty not? good idea. But Why third not? down and one coming up now. Trying to go tempo too with Taj Brooks in the backfield. Yeah, I think he got it this time. Got to the 35-yard line before being pushed back. Good call, good play, utilizing it. Jet sweep to test, test the eye discipline of those defenders and then just go hand it off inside to the young freshman. A little pump fake here from. And then the pass that is high pointed by Azukama. 
And another flag is down as easy as they like to call it. All that one in. We'll check the marker. More to cut. And a man downfield. 74. Offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. He's still first down. Will Ferrar, the guilty party, who's in for some action here in the game. He backs up Deaton. will also play some guard from time to time. Well, you almost can say it wasn't his fault. You know, uh, Columbia turned that into an RPO yeah. in real time. Weston Wright is also down, the left guard. Sophomore from New Brownsville, Texas. And uh, I think we're saying some of the same things about Rattler tonight. We were saying about Mahomes when he was here. He just did not have at that time as Ezra Cabo makes that pass. He did not have the supporting cast that Rattler has necessarily. I, I think the point of Oklahoma, it's the, on offense in particular, the kids are in charge now, Tim. Yep, yep. That, that's the truth of it. And, and Oklahoma's not used to being in that situation. I think the fans are not used to being in it. But tonight he saw what one piece can do to accelerate the oh. place that we're used to seeing Oklahoma compete. Absolutely. Ramondre Stevenson made all the difference in the world in the balance to this offense for Spencer Rattler. And that's even with a number of drops by his receivers. He's not a man or night for Mims by Campbell after the week he had last week. And this is going to be a procedure call on the yep. Texas Tech now and pre-snap. Yep. These guys have got to be disciplined and play the, for the full 60. Prior to the snap, false start, number 76. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. It's going to happen when you bring some freshmen in. And by the way, when to Lincoln Riley's credit, he decided to sort of put up the white flag and bring all of his backups into the game. So given that fact, uh, Matt Wells has done the same thing. And you'll see this move by the right tackle. Yeah, and look, look at the left tackle, too. I mean, they're yep. so far off the ball to your uh -huh. point. It yep. was made earlier, Tim. <laughs> is an indication as to why. Well, just work on the eye discipline a little bit, and they need these kind of plays because Oklahoma in that last quarter controlled it, Timmy. They controlled the ball for 10 minutes and 38 seconds to 442 for Texas Tech, and they never had a chance to really respond to anything Oklahoma was doing as the down sooner on the sideline there after the nice run. It is uh, Justin Broyles, the nickel backer, number 25. Redshirt junior from Oklahoma City. Stripling. Just inside the zone, first and goal. Little look and turn, and it's Polk, and it's touchdown. Jaylor Polk had possession long enough. Now, Jaden Davis was playing off coverage, and again, he had to kind of reset, and that soft little cushion was just enough. They call it a game of inches for a reason, and you can see that Jaden Davis, the cornerback, watch the separation. He's off a little bit too much. He tries to drive through him, but the Leg power just too much for him. He gives up a touchdown. Wolf will try for the extra point. a moment ago. Four years ago, Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield put on an epic offensive showdown. Mayfield, 546 yards passing, five touchdowns. Mahomes, an FBS record, 734 passing yards, seven touchdowns, a record 1,708 total yards in a game. Oklahoma eventually won 66 to 59, a game that won't soon be forgotten, partner. Exactly where we were. Yeah, absolutely, man. We were in a front row seat. We were, we were, we were in Ben Benson's Steakhouse <laughs> in New York City, watching it. And by the way, in 2016, the basketball game was a Texas Tech 63-65 game. <laughs> Oklahoma won 66 to 59. So there you have it. The 
stereotype about the way the game has been played with the spread uh, earned its right of being there. But as, as you've suggested, and I agree, Spencer, I do think that a closer look at the way this conference is being played now and the balance in it, the defenses truly are improving. And again, it's probably the first time in over maybe 20 years or more, yeah. certainly since the Big 12 Conference's inception, yeah. where you say that the defense is driving its identity, maybe not to the same level as offense, right. but in terms of improvement year over year, that's what we've seen mainly because of the youth at Oklahoma yeah. and other places transition, new coaches coming in. It's the defense that's defining it. It almost seems like in past games between these two, and no, this is Lincoln Riley's alma mater. This is where he cut his teeth with yep. Mike Leach. You almost had to get to 60 to win the game when you were playing Oklahoma against Texas. Uh, that's been the Texas. narrative yep. historic. No doubt about it. Here's Mordecai. And he finds Marvin Mims. That's a first down. Talking about great mentor, Spencer. He's had a few, beginning with Leach. Look at these pictures of him. First off, he, he played under Leach. <laughs> then he coached under him. He looks a little older there. I said, that's the guy he loves yeah, right there. Ruffin Ruffin McNeil. McNeil. Yeah, McNeil. Came in in a pinch to run his defense before they hired Grinch. And, of course, under Bob Stoops. And it was uh, our honor to be on hand in Norman when they won that last Big 12 title on their home field with Mayfield. Whoa, good hit. How about that? Oh, my goodness. Well, I think he, Henderson may have hammered Monroe on yeah. that one, but I'm telling you, because Big Fella was coming in line with big-time speed, running heavy, low, with pad level, and watch him lower the yeah. boom. In a bad humor. Yeah, he wasn't going backwards. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's great football that's right there. Let's hear it. Yeah. That's, that's one where the defender has to get up and start shaking his head. Oh, I'm good. That's called yeah. putting it in your watch pocket. Yeah. McGowan. Runs right over Monroe, and then in there to polish up was Alex Hogan. Still shaking on that last play. He, <laughs> he hit him like he owed him money, man. Woo. Spencer, we were here, if you recall, we're talking about Mahomes. We were here for that game against Texas that was such a shootout. Oh, yeah. And, oh, my, did Mahomes put on a show that day. Man, he was, those flick, those arm flicks, and those cross body passes, he was throwing them left and right. Now he owns a Super Bowl ring. BP on. How about that? A lifetime contract. Yep. Mordecai underneath to Mims. Under the 41 yard line. That's the first down. He's spending all of his free time meeting with Troy Aikman virtually. <laughs> yep. Right before those games that he and Joe get the call. Uh -huh. I think uh, he's got some nuptials coming up pretty soon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. yeah. Mahomes does. And uh, you would know that it would be Kyler Murray that winds up with the former Texas Tech coach Cliff Kingsbury, right? Yeah. There's Henderson. Well, a nice little sidestep by Henderson there, man. It's subtle, Timmy, but there's a lot of athleticism and talent back here. Yeah, I don't know where this was prior to TCU, and it was more pleasure at the time getting it done for him. But a nice little sidestep here. Just watch this. He sucks him in and brings him in, patient, running behind the big fella up front, and then he makes a nice side move. Puts his foot in the ground and gets back upfield for the extra two yards. It's quality running right there. And all this, and yet not everyone that's really a playmaker got to play tonight. Again, Charleston Rambo did not suit up. Mordecai burrows down to about the 32. You thought better of it and just hit the turn. Yeah, Mordecai's got to be, Tanner's got to be careful about sliding first with his feet in those situations. Because let me tell you, these active Texas Tech Red Raider players are playing defense. There's DeMarco Murray right there. Yeah, Thomas, he was he was was Cowboy and right from over 7,000 at the next level in 3,600 at Oklahoma. Actually broke into the college ranks with Kevin Sumlin at Arizona. Stayed there a year and then came over to Oklahoma. His backs are acquitting themselves well tonight. Yes, they are. Now is staying alive, turning those legs. Another first down for 26. Yeah, you're talking about guys who had sweet skill set, Timmy. That guy right there had big-time speed. Oh, yeah. Big time. Sprinter speed. I knew he, he hurt his knee 
that final year of high school when he came to Oklahoma, he's kind of got that run straight style, but I'm telling you, man, he's still legitimate 4-3 on the big end and uh, never caught that guy from behind. Was a threat also in the punt return game and just a fun guy to be around. There's some of the products that he's been producing and nurturing them. You know, when you get a guy that's been relatively in the league, relatively close period of time, these guys identify with him. They remember when he played the game, and he's able to relate to him at a totally different level. Henderson again. Up the first down. Puts the foot in the ground against another four or five before being tossed to the ground. Body language, leaning forward to finish. He got an additional three yards to him after that contact near the end of the run and leaning forward. That seems like it doesn't matter a lot, but man, I'm telling you, that's, coaches love to salivate on those points. One of the really great minds of the college game is uh, it's better off with him in it. There goes McGowan again. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Just worn down this Texas Tech defense and for these young guys that are blocking for him that are down in the depth chart somewhat well you know they're feeling good about this it's like that end zone has a homing beacon in there somewhere yeah. man and he's finding it and he just turned on that speed to split those two defenders to get in Cowan does a fantastic job of finishing guys like Andrew Rain the freshman oh, yeah. from Broken Arrow Anton Harrison the freshman from DC Archbishop Carmel High School Side, Murray, Gray Walker. Oh, these kids don't get to play as much. High fives for everybody. <laughs> Lincoln getting into the act. Uh, in, in total yards, and I was noticing this a moment ago. We were looking at the numbers on Stevenson. I think you and I both agree he had the greatest impact from an offensive standpoint on making a difference in this OU team. His numbers are actually down from the norm. He's averaging 6.6 .6 yards a carry tonight as opposed to 8.1 a season ago and what he did today is make the <laughs> opponent defend the interior of the line of scrimmage that was key well here's uh, today's pacific life game summary sponsored by pacific life more than 150 years strong trust in your tomorrow it was all of those running backs hall and company that was a controversial call somewhat although the call stood went to his tight end and got the ball in the end zone as well but this guy right here man let me tell you something he ran heavy and he's part of the reason why oklahoma's got 552 total yards and you look at the 14 total drives tonight that they've had i mean you know just three punts and a missed field goal everything else has been touchdowns it's been total and complete saving that opening drive quick slant Taken in by Trey Cleveland. And he gets out ahead for a first down. Texas Tech must regather after this week's pitcher. They're at TCU. That's no walk in the park. Gary Patterson's team has been struggling some offensively. And they play Baylor. But for all the steps forward last week against West Virginia, you know, the psyche of a team can be affected. I think that's the job of not just Matt Wells, but also his defensive coordinator who I know you're high on Keith Patterson those two uh, had a lot of positive things to feel coming into this game based on their performance against West Virginia but again in college football and particularly in the COVID era from week to week you just don't know what you're going to get well you spent all week preparing and you know that they've got a back and pleasure that's decent but you weren't expecting him to be the out pitch guy no. much less the guy who's yeah. been on the sideline for half the year Darius Townsend to the 46 yard line. You know, and it's not just a run game, too, Tim. In Oklahoma on the offensive side of the ball, 10 different players have caught a pass today. And again, as you look at Coach, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to get this team better. They will continue to improve. But they just ran into a team that got some parts back, made a difference today for them. Third down and three. remains the setback. They go trips out to the top of the screen. Ball run here. Yep. I love he can do that. Yep. And, you know, in a lot of ways, you can be feeling that with him at quarterback, they are going to win with just that complimentary football. They, they couldn't do that tonight because Oklahoma was just a juggernaut. But is that the direction you believe Matt wants to go? Great in? observation because I think they'll be in more games. Now, again, I think we get used to them putting up all of these 
fireworks. Yeah. They may win games with lower scores from time to time, but I think the fact that they can play better defense, they may find themselves in some, some battles where they want to play takeaway yeah. or, you know, keep away. And they can do that on defense now. Let's face it, that's what's happened. Uh, two weeks in a row, they had scoops and scores, and one of them was to win a game. A pass for Miles Price, a freshman from the Colony, Texas. He was a favorite target a week ago. That's a, some dynamics in his game. And Timmy, you know what I think has also fostered some success. You know, Matt Wells, as a head coach, is involved in every phase. And I think yeah. what he's done with uh, Keith Patterson, his defensive coordinator, has allowed him to acquire some defensive talent. When Cliff was here, this team was going to be offensive heavy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, recruiting-wise and everything else, you see it in some of the defensive plays that come in. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. How about that maneuver by Price? He runs a quick out, and then to the first down. In fact, I believe he may have uh, marked him just short. About a half yard shy of a first down. Jeremiah Cordell, 22, was trying to corral him in there, but he spun out of that one. Third down, less than a yard. so fast you snap your paint job off your helmet <laughs> that guy right there's got some speed man oh man oh my Woo. remember no xavier white tonight he was out injured so Roderick thompson really playing with bruised ribs so this guy along with taj brooks have had to tote the mail most of the evening but <laughs> uh, chidarius has uh, some big ups and this helps them in terms of moving forward and getting ready for next week Wesley. Good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, millions of kids nationwide are without normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why here at Fox Sports and Good Sports, we're restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. It was such a needed thing to keep these kids active in the environment. They've been cooped up in their homes. It's so important to get out and move around. Chan Chandler Morris is going to get a little playing time. Freshman, Island Park, Texas. Island Park High School. Four-star quarterback. Well, you have to figure that. He's a quarterback at Oklahoma. He's on the depth chart, right? Uh, is the number 196 recruit in the country, according to some. This is a young man that uh, threw for 3,658 yards, 42 touchdowns as a senior. His father, Chad, is the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. That would be Chad Morris's son. How about that? Former yeah, SMU and the Arkansas head coach, so it's good to see Chandler getting a little playing time. Gets it into the hands of Seth McGowan. In terms of high school football in Texas, there's no one who's known war, man. Yeah, you know, he's a legend. Chad is a legend. He's in that, that whole Stevensville, yeah. you know, that whole group of legendary coaches that go way, way, way back. Friday Night Lights, baby. Yeah, no that's question. what it's all about. So I know that uh, Chad, after a, a big win for his Auburn Tigers today at home at Jordan Hare against LSU, probably propping his feet up after looking at some film of his own and uh, watching his son play. Here's McGowan trying to reverse field. And Eric Monroe will be credited for the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. You're talking about just a plethora of coaches. Our Browse is back coaching on the high school level in Texas now. They've got so much heritage and yeah. tradition and just a sea of riches in terms of leaders. Talk about how different a week would be, right? The, the Auburn offense. The way everyone was thinking about them until today, oh, it changes a lot. I mean, from week to week, it's uh, more of a mystery this year than in past years. Here goes Chandler, sliding down about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Gave himself up. Eric Monroe was coming that way. He was He's coming, all buddy. smiles, too. Chandler's the, he's the happiest guy out there that he... 
Harrison safely tucked himself away before the hit game. Well, I love how Big Anton Harrison, the left tackle, let him know about it. And he sees him coming. <laughs> he gets down. Dumb. you got to go tell Tanner. Say, Tanner, this is how you do Whoops, it, man. There's a little whiplash action <laughs> by Chandler. <laughs> no one smiling more than the coach's son. Chad's got to get a pick out of that. Here's the boot from Munchow. Adrian Fry. Here comes Fry. He's ahead past the 35 to the 37, 38 yard line. Well, Spencer, we have uh, emptied our bucket as much as possible. So how about some Tillman Steaks on your favorite Halloween candies? Jolly Ranchers are always good. The full-size Snickers, we talked about those. Yeah. And then the Baby Roots. Now, the, the candy corn, that'll lead you toward diabetes. you got to stay off of that stuff. Well, man. That's got a little bit too much sugar uh, in it. Well, okay. But see, in my older years, I'm not having nearly as much. Junior Mints? <laughs> junior Mints. You look like a Junior Mints guy. Maybe a little, you know, uh, know, almond joy. <laughs> All of it's good, though. Alan Bowman is in the game. This young man getting a little playing time. And mop-up duty, Trey Cleveland on the receiving end. Look, this young man, the only thing that, that he's not been able to accomplish is stay healthy. Everything else he's really done. Started the first four game, games and played remarkably well against Texas. Superb arm. That pass is caught for a first down by Fungi. And to that point, Timmy, you're able to make that. That's a full throw right there. Across the field, that's a requisite throw that you got to be able to make at the next level. And you got to have courage in the guy to be able to do that. I mean, it's just been one thing after another for him from an injury standpoint. Started at quarterback for three games last season before shoulder injury against Arizona derailed his season. I just like how he's handled it. You know, the demotion. You talk to David Yotes and the company. They said, hey, look, he's handled it well. Yeah. We've, we've seen it tonight. Council and Columbia on the sidelines being a good teammate. There's Taj Brooks. Midfield to the 48-yard line. You know, the difficult truth is these coaches' years were measured in dog years, Timmy. And when you're a coach, you're trying to get wins. They were one and three when they made the switch. He was the guy that's going to give them the best chance to win. Again, David Yost's familiarity with him at Utah State was really the impetus of it all. It was nothing well, personal other than just putting them in a position to make plays and, and improve this team's outcomes. You know, he, he snapped Patrick Mahomes' mark of 598 yards against Baylor. I mean, he, he broke some serious records here as a quarterback. He just could not stay healthy. A little swing pass out to Brooks. And he'll be two yards shy. And you know what? Th th those are some nuances in that play right there. The way he was able to keep his field, his shoulders upfield to allow Brooks to get the most that he possibly could out of that play tells you a little bit of something about the headiness of Bowman. See if they let him throw one downfield. Maybe a little seam route action here to show off that arm strength of his. He's got like a little three cross look. Yeah. You know, they've got four cross and they're rolling it back here. So we'll see. Allen's a dad. Kirk was a tight end on Penn State's national championship team in 82. And our pal Todd Blackledge in the 40 yard line. Brooks gets the first down. So the block has stopped as they move the chain. I don't know that Todd threw to his dad that often, though. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more of a blocking tight end back in the day with the black shoes and white crews that Penn State sported back in yesteryear. Particularly when looking ahead with the kind of talent that is now back on the field of play. Prospects are very good for the so-called second half of what has been a shortened season. Timmy, they say no plan. We're going to come back and wrap this one up, talk more about what happened today and what will be happening next week. Stay right where you are. 62-28, our final. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. 
I promise Spencer will get to say something. <laughs> the Fox Sports app. Well, Spencer, today we saw the unscathed go down, and Oklahoma sent a message. Yep, no question about it. Ramondre Stevenson's return really helped Spencer Rattler. 206 yards on the ground. That was significant. And the Pandora's box on winning this title is wide open. <laughs> Moving forward in the Big 12. Our many thanks to Brett Bender, our spotter, our content coordinator, Scott Alexander. Tonight's game produced by Jake Jolivet. Dustin Denny was our director. For them, our entire crew, and Spencer Tillman, the new grandfather. This is Tim Brando saying so long from Lubbock, Texas. Oklahoma wins over Texas Tech. We'll see you next week in Manhattan, Kansas.